Good afternoon and welcome everyone. Thank you for being here with us today. It's been a while and a lot of things have been happening lately and we hope that you guys are keeping yourself as well as the people around you safe and healthy. With that, you can leave your thoughts right here. Comment down below about how you guys are feeling and if you are from PLM, you can also comment down your course together with your year and blog if you like to. And if you're from another school, you can also leave it below from where you're in. So we can also give you a shout out later. Again, thank you guys for attending today. Good afternoon, everyone. I am Angie Mercado. And I am Dorothy Jane Del Rosario, your hosts for today. So good afternoon. For now, we will have a different take on a Sunday because as far as every artista knows, uh, we usually have the Architectura online lecture series wherein we invite architects and other professionals to discuss topics concerning solely the things within and in connection within our field. But today, it's not only us, Kao. So, hindi lang tayo ang may initiative ng event na to. In That's collaboration right. with PLM, Association of Civil Engineering Students, and in partnership with Efondo Architectural Design Studio, Legacy Street, and Sentinote.ph, we present to you Juxtapose, Presidents of Lines, a webinar that will help us understand more the respective roles of architects and engineers on built heritage conservation. All right, so before we begin, partner, I want to ask you something. Mm -hmm. What do you think is the importance of preservation and conservation of our historic landmarks here in the Philippines? So partner, alam naman natin na ang Philippines mayaman sa history, di ba? And I think these historic landmarks or buildings are one of the things that completes the identity of the Filipinos. Kaya for sure, it is very important to preserve and conserve these buildings kasi nakatatak na dito yung identity nating mga Pilipino. And of course, the history of the Philippines itself. So Eka partner, what about you? What do you think about this topic for today? Yeah, I agree with what you said, no? Pero to add up to that, also, I also think na a country's identity is largely strengthened by its linkage or relation to its past. So this is embodied in this historic landmarks that were built. And in order to understand and maintain this, we should also take into consideration the roles of our professionals, our engineers and architects in protecting and conserving these parts of our history or parts of our past. Exactly. This is a very interesting and thrilling discussion for us architecture and engineering students because finally, we will be directly hearing the take of each professional at the same time. But about their roles in built heritage conservation and other related aspects in this topic later on our open forum segment. So our dear audience, make sure to stay tuned because we have a lot in store for you today. Yes, that's right. And before we forget, you guys can tweet us with the hashtag Juxtapost2021 and follow us on Twitter at KaopSC Official and, P and at PLM Aces. Aces. This is flashed on your screens right there. So we'll be reading some of your reactions later. You can also tag at KaopSC Official on your IG stories. Plus, support our One View One Step Forward campaign by subscribing and watching our videos here on YouTube, as well as Project Sync Connect an outreach program conducted through the efforts of PLM ACES aiming to provide prepaid Wi-Fi and monthly dose to financially challenged and deserving CE students. So they are still open for sponsorship from businesses, government agencies, or any, or any individuals who would like to take part of this initiative. So for possible sponsors, you can message them through their official Facebook page. It's PLM Association of Civil Engineering Students, or you can email them at plm.aces at 16 at gmail.com also for everyone's information only those who have successfully registered will be the ones who will receive the certificate of participation for this webinar and just a quick reminder guys if you have questions regarding our topic so kindly type them in the comment section below or save them up for later in the open forum so please remember to keep your comments professional and relevant to the topic so all right let's begin with our webinar proper now without further ado let me introduce our first speaker for today so for our first speaker today, he is a civil engineer specializing in 
Construction and Management. So he graduated at Pamantasan ng Lungsod ng Maynila. He acquired his postgraduate diploma in construction technology from Asaki Institute of Construction Technology in Japan. Currently, he is the principal consultant of JV Wanzon Consulting Construction Management Services, the former president in JV Wanzon Builders Incorporated, and now an associate professor in PLM. So to discuss the roles of engineers in built heritage concert conservation and techniques on examining structural stability of heritage buildings. Let us all welcome Dr. Joseph Berlin P. Wanzon. Uh, good afternoon to all our viewers. So thank you very much for uh, CAOP and PLMASS for inviting me in this event. Okay, so uh, before we discuss the role of the civil engineering or the engineering professionals in heritage conservation, so let me introduce myself first. I'm Dr. Joseph Berlin Onsa. Okay. So I'll have a topic outline for discussion. So I'll discuss the background and history of the heritage structures, then the importance of preserving the cultural heritage, the methods of heritage conservation, the role of engineers in preserving cultural heritage is with our uh, main topic, our main focus. The technological advancement in preserving heritage uh, structures and of course the conclusion. Okay, let, uh, before we go to the role of the professionals, uh, let's have a brief background first uh, and history of heritage. So what is heritage? So heritage has been described as the fingerprints of generations, okay? So it refers to any prominent destinations or object which is to be passed to on to the future generations, like uh, you, you, you younger, uh, younger generations. Heritage is actually of two types. <coughs> These are natural and the cultural heritage. Okay, so start with the natural. What are the natural heritage? It uh, comprises uh, everything that comes in the bio biological sphere, including flora, fauna, and geological formations. In our country, uh, we have our famous uh, rice terraces of the Philippines, and of course, the underground uh, river, Brawan, and of course, our uh, the chocolate hills in Bohol. Okay, so these are examples of natural heritage about our cultural? Cultural, on the other hand, is the legacy that is inherited from our ancestors. So maintained in the present and passed on to the future generations for their benefits. So for any nation, cultural heritage has always held an important place. So here in, the, in, our, here in our country, we have some of our cultural heritage, uh, such as the, uh, I think you're familiar with the began, uh uh, province, the Baholot, the ruins, and of course in our very own near near our school, the San Agustin Church. So these are just some examples of a uh, cultural heritage in our country. But in uh, <coughs> the world, <coughs> of course, we have world famous heritage structures like the the uh, Egypt, uh, the pyramids of Egypt or Giza. We have the uh, uh, China the famous Great Wall of China, the Taj Mahal, Ninja, the Parthenon, and of course the, uh, of the uh, Monument of Liberty, or the Statue of Liberty, and many more. Of course, the Colossium Roads, the Eiffel Tower of Paris, <laughs> the Bridge, and the Eiffel, uh, the uh, Leading Tower of Pisa. Okay. In the Philippines, we also have our famous heritage structures. <coughs> we have here the Magyao uh, Church in uh, Iloilo. Of course, the, uh, in uh, Pauai, Binondo Church in Manila, Binondo. And of course, uh, as I've said earlier, the San Agustin Church. So these are among the famous churches in, uh, in our country, which are already more than 400 years ago, I think. This was built by the Spaniards. It comes to buildings, we also have uh, uh, 
heritage buildings uh, that are uh, rehabilitated or restored, just like the National Museum, the Metropolitan Theater, so the, the famous building in Binondo, okay, the Manila Hotel, of course, and the, uh, the tower in the uh, north, in uh, northern province. Also, we have some famous houses like the uh, heritage, heritage uh, houses like the house of uh, Bilogunaldo, Cavit. This one is in uh, Cebu, the oldest one of the old church. This one is the uh, in Taal, Batangas, the uh, uh, house of the Agoncillos. This is the one is from uh, the house of Luna. Luna. Okay, and the house of uh, Ramon Magsaysay, uh, former president Ramon Magsaysay. So why is it important to preserve cultural heritage? So heritage buildings, including archaeological remains <coughs> of an area, are a representation of its culture and history. So cultural heritage keeps us connected with our traditions, customs, religion, beliefs, and community identities. It is also what gives its community and the country on the whole its individual identity. So as you can see, if you see uh, the uh, gondola in the river, that's, uh, that reminds us of the community in Venice, Italy. How about this? It's not uh, still at the heritage, but that is an iconic building in Sydney, Australia. Of course, we we'll, uh, will not uh, we'll forget the the tower, the bridge tower in uh, London, England, and the Vatican City, Peter. Okay, so these are uh, uh, heritage uh, places that will remind us of the individual, uh, the individual identity of each country or places. Uh, cultural heritage is also something that gives people a sense of unity and helps them understand their origins. So this is an example of the, uh, I've said earlier, the uh, Great Wall of China, which they uh, unite ang mga Chinese to protect themselves from the Mongolian. Hello, engineer. Yeah, so, it's okay. Yeah, sorry po, I would just like to update you na hindi po gumagalaw yung PowerPoint nyo po sa aming oh. screen. Yes po. So if ever po sana, yes po, paki-exit po muna ang inyong share screen and then share nyo po siya ulit. Oh, what happened? Ang gasa saan siya? Sa first slide pa din po siya nakastop. So paki-share screen pa rin po ulit. Yes po, hindi po siya gumagalaw. Bakit siya akong gumagalaw siya? Uh, sorry about that. Sana <laughs> So that's the technical problem of this, uh, no, no. Yes, so cool. balik up, uh, then I'll share again. Yes, po. Then let's see po if nag -na next na po yung slide nyo po. So do I have to start all over again? Ah, uh, no, it's okay po. Narinig naman po nila just the slides. So, here po yung naka-flash po is importance of preserving cultural yeah. heritage. Okay yeah, po. because I'm already here. Yes po. Can you please try to next po, to the next slide po? How about this? Still on the importance of preserving cultural heritage po. They uh, want us uh, to just present your presentation po. So heritage conservation is the ando na ako sa, wala na ako dun sa Great Wall of China. No sa ah, Great Wall of China para. Yes po. So what will I do? Do you want It's us to present your PowerPoint na lang po and then you can say next na lang po. Ah uh, okay. So you're the one to who will eh, who will ano? Yes po. Present so I'll stop sharing. Yes po. We'll share your okay. uh, PowerPoint na lang po, and then uh, you can say next na lang po. So you can okay. proceed with the browser itself so you can see your PowerPoint presentation. Okay. Thank you po.
So I will exit. You can stay on your but browser, Paul. I can stay on my browser. Yes, Paul. but do you see your PowerPoint presentation, na, Paul? Yeah, okay. You can Malit. continue, Paul. Malit. Malit siya, hindi ko siya makita. <laughs> so how can I uh, make it a little bigger? Uh, is your uh, browser on full screen po? Uh, yes, yeah, so, pero malit pa rin yung ano niya. You can click uh, po on the bottom, bottom right po. Meron pong full screen sa bottom right. Bottom right. Right, ng screen po. Wala eh. Anyway, sige. <laughs> Kaya itong maliit. I'll try sige to <laughs> read it in. Eh, no? Okay, so as I've said kanina, no? so the importance of preserving cultural heritage is uh, <clears throat> another thing is that uh, uh, the heritage conservation is the actions or process that aim at protecting a cultural resource in order to maintain its heritage value. So it has also proven to be extremely beneficial over the years. The conservation of historical buildings helps in enhancing the overall impact by protecting their values. So how how, how did the uh, this cultural heritage uh, help? Diba, in tourism, especially in tourism, medyo, uh, because uh, a lot of tourists uh, always go to you know, to heritage, uh, cultural heritage places, not only stay in, uh, in the hotels. Okay, so next. So UNESCO declares that there are two approaches uh, to preserve cultural heritage. So one is to just record it in a tangible form and conserve it as an archive. So, delegate natin siya sa library so that others can see. And the other one is by uh, preserving it in a living form by ensuring its transmission to the next generation. So, yung the, 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 the building itself or the structure itself or the site itself is being preserved. Okay? So that uh, can be, it can be seen by the, uh, uh, by the future generations. Next. So cultural heritage preservation refers to the process of preserving or safeguarding the elements of the heritage element so as to protect its value, uh, thereby increasing its physical life. So heritage conservation refers to the process of preserving the buildings in the ways that do not mean a major alteration to the structure. So sometimes kasi we need to alter so to that it will be still be safe to the public. But uh, it should not be a major, it should not be a major uh, alteration so that it will not ruin the, the, the heritage uh, element itself. Uh, next. So what are the uh, different methods of preserve, uh, preserving this uh, cultural heritage? So there are four. Uh, I'll start with number one, retention. When you say retention, it focuses on the maintenance, stabilization, and repair of existing historic materials and retention of proper, uh, properties form as it uh, evolves over the time. So that means wala tayo masyadong uh, ginalaw when, when it comes to retention. So para minintain lang natin siya, nililinis lang natin siya, and uh, as is na siya. And where is. So kaya lang it will, it will no longer be uh, parang functional. Parang for tourism purposes lang talaga siya. But the but it uh, it is more ano important kasi talagang uh, as uh, yung original na na structure niya even the materials are intact okay so that's retention so next <coughs> the next uh, method is uh, restoration okay ah well <laughs> up small bra bakit nagdere dere <laughs> can you can you go back Uh, there's always a technical problem. <laughs> okay. So, uh, the second one is restoration. So, it depicts a property at a particular period of time in history. 
So, while removing evidence of other periods. So, in this ca case, when you say, for example, the, the, the ruins was uh, actually uh, burned uh, during, I think, during the, uh, before the war. So, nung nasulog siya, uh, nirestore siya, uh, pero yung mga uh, other, ano niya, other parts ng building, tinanggal na. So, hindi na siya functional. Okay? Ang um, niretain lang talaga kung ano yung uh, itsura niya no uh, hindi pa siya nasusunod okay so ni restore lang siya physically speaking okay, next uh, the other uh, method of pre uh, preservation is reconstruction so that means it recreates uh, vanished or non surviving portions of a property for interpretive purposes so like for example the house of presal in kalamba na giba na totally demolished siya but it was reconstructed Okay, so yung pag-reconstruct sa kanya, it is uh, the, kung ano yung tsura talaga ni, nung bahay ni, ni Jose Rosal nung araw, yun ang ginawa sa, sa bahay niya during the reconstruction. And another example is the, you know, uh, I think this is the National, the National Museum. Dati siyang, I think, building for commerce. So it was uh, destroyed uh, during the during World War, I think World War II. Then again, it was reconstructed and uh, to be uh, habitable and livable again and functional again into uh, as, uh, as the natural as the national museum. Next. Uh, now, what are rehabilitation? <laughs> okay, so I think there's a. Uh, anyway, that, that, because rehabilitation was the major role of the civil engineers. <laughs> Okay, I think that's before restoration. Is uh, restoration is uh, uh, after retention is rehabilitation. Yeah, that's good. So rehabilitation is defined as the act or process of making possible a compatible use for a property through repair, alterations, in addition, so while preserving those portions or features which convey historical, cultural, and architectural values. So in this case. Dito na yun meron uh, repair talaga, inalter siya, and, and have some additional, uh, uh, for example, structural uh, uh, rehabilitation so that it can still be uh, functional again and livable again. So as you can see, this the uh, the Rizal Memorial Coliseum. So medyo inaabandon na siya dati, but uh, nung magkaroon tayo ng SEA Games, uh, nirehabilitate uh, ni siya. And it, again, it was uh, used again for sports uh, activities. Okay, so that's the result in Morocco here. Okay, that's rehabilitation. Next. Okay, let's uh, now go to our main uh, topic of this. Uh, no, no. So just just uh, more of a brief background. So let's now go to the role of the CE in preserving healthy structures. Next. <coughs> so before we can uh, 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 rehabilitate a structure, we need to analyze analyze it first. So that that's uh, the job of civil engineer is the structural analysis. So one of the method in analyzing uh, healthy structures is through mathematical modeling. So it is a basic tool to the modern practice. So it is an approach which presents the civil engineer with the necessity to possess knowledge of a broad range of materials, their properties, changes they undergo with time. So how do we do this? So next. So this is an example of a uh, structural analysis of a heritage church. This is the Basilica of Immaculate Conception in Batanga City. So uh, we did this with my uh, thesis uh, advisee, uh, Engineer uh, Ray Ocampo. So we we don't have, since we don't have the uh, plans or the built plans of the church because it's very old now. So the, the thing that we that, that she did is to venture again uh, and prepare the plans. So you see the floor plans, one elevation, as you can see. Then uh, it is now modeled in a uh, structural uh, uh, analysis uh, software. 
So uh, there are a lot of there are a lot of analysis uh, structural analysis software like Stad, uh, Itabs, Midas, and SAP 2000 and so on. Okay. So next. So after modeling it, so of course it was drawn uh, using uh, uh, I think AutoCAD, then uh, model it in uh, no in a uh, SAP 2000. Then, as you can see now, the the church, uh, you can see the distribution of stresses and in the structure using the uh, first is the static linear analysis. So, makita niya yung may kulay, uh, color coded na siya. So, the yellow are hindi siya critical or the, the critical or malaki stresses are the blue ones. Okay? So, in the, in this case, makikita mo na kagad kung alin sa part, alin part ng structure yung prone to damage or, or prone to na, na masira agad. So, makita niya yung blue part Yung blue parts are the most stressed uh, parts of the, or most stressed elements of the structure. So next. And then the other me uh, method is the uh, time history. So ibig sabihin nito kung gano, uh, uh, it indicates kung uh, an analysis on on the use of time history analysis. So may kita mo rin yung stresses, the series of stresses and deflections in these structures. So as you can see, Nakita nyo doon sa may entrance, so sa baba, uh, medyo blue na talaga siya. So that means that is a critical uh, element of the structure. Okay? So in this case, ma-analyze natin, ma ma natin ng mabuti yung structure kung saan yung uh, critical element. So yun, yun ang i-rehabilitate natin or i-retrofit natin. Okay? So next. So as I've said kanina, uh, one of method of uh, rehabilitating a, a hernia structure is retrofitting. So what is retrofitting ba? So it is an approach based on recent technological developments and scientific knowledge whereby modern construction methods and materials are applied to the repair and strengthening of historical structures. Next. <clears throat> So it is also a process of addition of new pictures of older buildings. So they natin siya ng uh, other elements. <laughs> okay. So heritage structures, bridges, etc. So re retrofitting reduces the vulnerability of damage of an existing structure during a near future seismic activity. So those are the forces that affects the structures, like the wind and the uh, uh, earthquake. Okay? So, kalina na identify natin kung saan yung mga uh, most stress elements, then yun yun, yun nung magkupokus tayo to the retrofit. So, what are the retrofitting activities? Next. So, one method, uh, so we're now on the role of the civil engineering na talaga. So, one method of uh, but repeating uh, heritage structures, or not only heritage structures, but also uh, new structures, is uh, is concrete jacketing. So actually, uh, this is one method of confinement. Okay. So when we say concrete jacketing, so <clears throat> it involves placing an additional layer of concrete covering the existing column. So kung bagay existing column, so mahina nasa kagaya kanina sa church. Kung mahina na column, that means we will. Uh, add an additional layer of concrete, but with, of, of course, with uh, additional reinforcement also, uh, uh, still reinforcement. <clears throat> so that is together with the additional longitudinal bars and ties to enhance the flexural and or the shear capacity of the column. So that is the concrete jacketing. Next. Another uh, way of confining, uh, confinement is carbon fiber. So, mas medyo uh, mahal na konti, but uh, hindi siya ganun kakapal kasi gaya ng concrete. So, car uh, carbon fiber uh, reinforced concrete is a composite product that consists of carbon fiber, of course, which provides strength and stiffness <coughs> and polymers which uh, hold the fiber together in, ki uh, in kind of matrix. So, ang yung makita nyo yung, ano, yung carbon fiber, ididikit siya dun sa affected na the beams or columns, uh, pero didikit siya using a uh, polymer or parang what, what we call the epoxy, ano, epoxy based uh, polymers to, para dumikit yung carbon fiber dun sa concrete. 
So very vital din yung uh, importance ng pagdidikit natin. Kasi it, it, is, it should adhere para magiging one element, uh, magiging one element siya. May the concrete and the, uh, and the carbon fiber. So it will form a, a kind of matrix. Okay? So the micro, the macro fibers can be either synthetic or natural. But uh, of course, we use, uh, usually use the synthetic nowadays. Okay? So I think some of the structures that are... Uh, kung ayaw natin ng uh, mas mahirap na kakapal siya, then the use of carbon fiber is, is more ano, advisable. Okay, next. So, again, the third <coughs> way of confinement is the, uh, what we call the steel jacketing. Okay, so steel jacketing of RC columns, beams is strengthening also. <coughs> System adapted to improve the deformation and strength capacity of existing buildings. That is seismically designed. So, may mga luwang building tayo na hindi siya seismically designed or gumamit pa ng old codes natin, ng mga luwang codes natin. So, in order to ano, uh, strengthen siya, uh, we also use the steel jackets. So, mas manipis siya kaysa sa, sa concrete jacketing. So, as you can see, that's an example of our building in, ano, the building in at PLM, the Gusaling at Chiansa, wherein we apply the steel jacketing method in uh, uh, most of the beams there, okay? So, that will reinforce the beams in case of uh, systemic activity, okay? So, okay, makita nyo, ma malapad yung steel, uh, makapal yung steel niya. Okay, then it is uh, welded inside, uh, meron siyang uh, dinadrill siya, then uh, post, uh, para makita, ma madikit dun sa uh, steel sa loob. And then it will be also injected with uh, epoxy. So the epoxy will uh, bind, the epoxy adhesive will bind the steel to the concrete. Okay, so that will now form again a, a solid, ano na, uh, the steel and the concrete. So next. So another way of strengthening uh, or retrofitting structure, if meron siya mga cracks, mga uh, existing cracks na siya para hindi lumaki yung mga cracks, what we, uh, another method is what we call the epoxy injection. Okay. So, epoxy injection is an economical method of repairing non-moving cracks in concrete walls, slabs, columns, and pairs, in the, and is capable of restoring the concrete to its pre-crack strength. Okay? So, it's just an uh, easy ano lang naman siya, uh, way. Kung may kita nyo, especially sa slab, kasi uh, mahirap pag overhead, uh, kasi yung tutulog, by, by, by gravity, tutulog yung uh, epoxy, so nilagyan mo na ng, ng parang uh, adis, uh, ano, uh, tape para hindi, tumut, hindi bumagsak yung epoxy, then it was injected. So, kita niya, makita niya marami siyang uh, injection uh, needles okay? to inject the epoxy. So pag natuyo na siya, it will now uh, seal the cracks of the walls and the slabs. Okay, so next. <coughs> So, another way of retrofitting, lalo na if this concerns the foundation, uh, like the Leaning Tower of Pisa, nagkaroon siya ng uneven settlement. So, one way of uh, restoring it is the using micropiling. But in case of uh, the Leaning Tower of Pisa, ayaw nilang ibalik sa dati kasi yun ang nagpaganda sa kanya, <laughs> yung paglin niya. Okay? Pero... But I think it is already uh, delegated na siya ng micropiles para steady lang siya sa ganong classic inclination. Hindi na siya babagsak ulit. Hindi na siya bababa pa talaga. Kasi delegated na siya. So, micropiles are small diameter drilled and grouted friction piles. Okay? So, it piles include steel uh, element that are bonded with the bearing soil or rock. Okay? Usually with uh, cement grout. So, as you can see, that also is our building inside PLM. So that is the gusaling uh, chance also. So hinanap, uh, hinukay namin yung ano, uh, gilid ng building. Then uh, until we uh, find the, ano, uh, we, want, we found out the, what do you call this, the uh, putting tie beams. 
and the mat foundation. Okay? So sa mat foundation namin, kinor uh, naglagay ng core belt. Then nag-drill uh, ng mga micropiles, I think, one meter apart. Okay? So I think that is, uh, I think, around 12 to 15 meters on depth niya. Okay, that serves as the friction piles and uh, and bearing piles. So it helps in what? Kasi mahaba yung building natin at that time. So uh, so to, to prevent uh, from an even settlement, so nilagyan natin ng micropiles yung buo para hindi na siya mag-settle ng gusto. Okay, so make it uh, more safer. Okay, so then, then uh, after placing the micropiles, then we anchor it, anchor it, uh, anchor the micropiles to the, you know, uh, putting tie beams or the mat foundations. Okay, next. So that's uh, one method. <coughs> see, you see that the, the micropiles are anchored to the to the foundations. So another way of retrofitting or strengthening structural members is the uh, seismic base isolation. So major ano nito, uh, this requires already a uh, quite uh, major uh alteration especially sa foundation but the i think that this is a technology na uh hindi pa natin masyadong nagagawa in, in other, but in other countries they already been doing this especially in japan i think they rehabilitated the uh old tokyo station so they put a seismic base isolation so it is one of the most popular means of protecting structure against earthquake forces so, bakit ba din natin nilalagyan ng ano, uh, seismic base isolation? Ano yung ibig sabihin ng seismic base isolation? You isolate the foundation from the main structure by putting a uh, rubber bearings, friction bearings, ball bearings, and spring system. Okay? So, instead na lindol siya na nakaspix yung column dun sa, sa puttings, separated siya by the uh, base isolation, which, which is, uh, sabi ko kanina, rubber or uh, friction bearings or ball bearings or spring system. So, that, so hindi, uh, uh, so, pag nagkaroon ng earthquake, kahit na gano'n kalakas siya, hindi, hindi magiging rigid yung structure, sasayaw lang siya. Ma, magsusway siya ng malaki, pero hindi siya babagsak. Okay, that because of there's a because of the seismic base isolation. I think this is uh, uh this will be very difficult if churches ang lalagyan natin ng seismic base isolation kasi masyadong malaki church but it think I think it still be possible for other buildings. Okay? Next. Okay. So those are the some uh, hindi hindi siya um uh, I think marami pang ano no marami pang ways of preserving and conserving the healthy structures, but uh, I think we have, don't have, I wasn't given enough time to discuss it, discuss it all, no? So, for my conclusion, so, cultural heritage over time has become an important part of our lives as it helps us stay connected to our ancestors. Therefore, it helps develop the connection between the past and the future, which is why the common man should also strive to enhance the protection and conservation of these heritage buildings, sites, and artifacts. Next. Oops. Uh, no pass. Okay. <laughs> so the civil engineers, therefore, plays a vital role in preserving cultural heritage structures through rehabilitation, restoration, and reconstruction. So the multi the multidisciplinary approach of architects and engineers so common in the new construction. So now the, the new era may one day become the standard in preserving these heritage structures. Okay? So, I think that's uh, also, I, uh, as I said earlier, so, it, uh, cultural heritage is not only keeping the memories of the past generations alive, but also generates income for local communities and the country at large. It is a clear why uh, conservation efforts are necessary and dispensable. So why is it important sa bakit nag-generate ng income? It because of the uh, tourism, right? So I've said kanina. So oh, most of the tourists goes to a lot of cultural heritage uh, sites and structures. Okay? So I think that's uh, <coughs> all for my uh, talk for today. So thank you for listening to my presentation.
So thank you so much, engineer, for that fruitful talk. And to our viewers, we apologize for the technical difficulties. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but anyway, thank you so much again, Dr. Wanson, for that uh, talk about roles of engineers in built heritage conservation and techniques on examining structural stability of heritage buildings. So as what engineer mentioned a while ago, heritage is a fingerprint nga of our generation. And this is to be transferred into another generations as well. So it's very crucial to understand and identify these kinds of built heritage to also understand the roles of our professionals sa pagpapanatili nito. So basically, as what engineers said, again, heritage helps us na in a sense where people can be connected to our past. And as a whole, it gives us a sense of unity. Also take note that, as what engineer mentioned, again, before undergoing any projects, may it be restoration or anything in line with it, we must first analyze before focusing right. on retrofitting or restoration. And the processes and approaches goes on. So again, thank you so much, engineer. And kindly stand by for the open forum later. Yeah, thank so you very much. Thank you. <laughs> so to our viewers, I know you have questions for our first speaker. But for now, you can send your questions on the comment section below. And we will take note of them later for the segment. So take note to keep your comments professional and relevant to the topic. So what a great start, partner, for our today's webinar. So, but today's surprises doesn't stop here, our dear audiences and viewers. So, because we have a lot more in store for you later. So, sit back, sit back, relax, and because there's more coming your way. That is right, partner. Also, guys, you can tweet us again using the hashtag Juxtapose2021 and follow at official and at PLMAces on Twitter so that we can read your tweets later and give you a shout out. So you can also tag at official on your IG stories. So again, support our One View, One Step Forward campaign by subscribing and watching our videos here on YouTube, as well as Project Synconnect, an outreach program conducted through the efforts of PLM ACES. So this project aims to provide prepaid Wi-Fi and monthly load to financially challenged and deserving CE students. They are still open for sponsorship from businesses, government agencies, or any individuals. So for possible sponsors, you can message them through their official Facebook page, PLM Association of Civil Engineering Students. That is flashed on the screen so you can visit their page and message them if you want to sponsor their project. And also you can email them in plm.aces16 at gmail.com. All right. So before we proceed with the next part of our program, we will be having a five-minute break. So you guys can go stretch it a bit and grab some drinks and snacks if you want to. Also, make sure to stay with us until the end because you might be one of the lucky winners who will receive prizes from our generous sponsors for our later segment. So hang in there, guys. So huge thanks to our project partners, Efondo Architectural Design Studio, Legacy Street, Sentinel.ph, also brought to you by L.R. Punsalam and Associates. Again, stay tuned and see you after the break. See you after the break, guys. I know you are all very excited for your semestral break, but one last thing. Pakipasa sa akin ang mga notes na naisulat nyo while I was discussing the whole semester. I know you were all jotting down notes while I was discussing, so I am expecting that I will see something tomorrow. And of course, just to remind you, the deadline of our last plate will be on Friday on or before 12 midnight. I know you all can do it. Goodbye and good luck sa mga plates nyo. Kaya niyan, happy end of the semester. Cheers. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Bo. Have a nice day.
dancing and I get with you, baby, tonight. I don't want to love, I don't want to fight. I don't want to have to tell you all the things I know. I don't want to stay, but I don't want to go. Kaya sarap nga naman balikan ang mga simpleng bagay na ginagawa natin noon. Magala. Kasama ang iyong mga kibigan dahil maagang natapos ang inyong klase. Naglalakad. Kasama ang inyong mga kamag-aral para maghanap ng mga kainan. Umuupo sa silita klatan at di sinasadyang makaiglag. At kung minsan pa nga, makukuhanan ka pa ng litrato habang ikaw ay tulog. Nagmamadaling maglapat ng papel sa hilera ng mesa sa pasilyo. Pinipilit mo ay paghabulan sa bawat segundo ng oras. Nag-aapurang gumuhit ng bawat linyang tila ba magdidikta ng inyong kapalaran. Minsan naiisip natin na tayo mag-isa lang. Pero nariyan sila. Isang lingon mo lang, nariyan sila sa tabi mo. Mga klase mong gumagawa. Mga kamag-aral mong dadamayan ka. Mga kaibigan mong masasandalan mo anumang oras. Kahit mahirap, kahit mahabang proseso, kahit nakakapagod, may oras pa. Sa pagpasok at pag-uwi noon, sa sabak sa mahabang biyahe, mabigat na trapiko, siksikan at mausok, bitbit ang napakaraming materyalis na napakahirap dalhin. Pero sama-sama kayo maglalakad papunta sa sakayan, kuminsan pa ay maghihintayan para lang sabay pumasok. Sa mga oras na nangangamusta ka ng plate ng iba kahit hindi pa tapos ang iyo, sa mga oras na nanghihiram ka ng white ink dahil nagkamali ka ng linya, sa mga oras na magpapagising ka dahil sinabi mong iglip ka lang sandali, sa mga oras na magpapasabay sila ng pagkain kahit hindi mo alam paano bibitbitin. Sa bawat oras na ito, nabuo ang ating samahan. Nakilala ang isa't isa sa gitna ng patuloy na pagsubok. Pagsasamahan na kahit anong pandemya ay walang makakasira. Pagkakaibigan na hindi magbabago. Simula noon hanggang ngayon. What's up, Arquistas? It's your host, Rika, and welcome to Arc Adventures Episode 2, Season 4. For this video, you've seen the title, you've seen the thumbnail, of course. So, we will be giving you tips on how to survive online school as an architecture student. But wait, hold up! If you're not an architecture student and you just happen to stumble across this video, don't click out yet. Because for sure, may makuha pa rin tips dito sa video na to on surviving your online class. For our tips, it is divided into three categories. Three categories. The first category are tips for your online classes. Second are while making your plates. 
And the third category being the other tips that can help you survive the whole setup in general. Now for our first category and first tip. Whoa! First argument for online class is to make sure to check your devices before the class starts. Make a camera test or a run a sound test to ensure that your camera, your microphone, or your headphone are working. The second tip is to always have a pen and a notebook with you when you're in class just to help you write down notes, write down specific details about the plate, or just to help you review for your exams. Tip number three, provide yourself with a glass of water right beside you. Or if you have some, go with a snack. Or if you're really scared of getting your plates wet, you could always go with a water bottle. Remember to keep yourself hydrated and quench your hunger during these online classes. Now on to the next tip. Tip number four, keep yourself from getting distracted sa online class. Alam ko naka-dependent po sa environment and sa bahay kasi hindi naman lahat may proper space for online learning. Hindi lahat may space na auto ng distractions, tapos hindi ka magkaingay. So I think it would be better kung i-inform yung mga kasama niyo sa bahay about sa class schedule niyo. Ganun. Para aware sila na may class ka. Ganun. At the same time, matulungan ka nila just in case na maingay kapitbahay niyo. Ganun, masabihan nila. And iwasan niyo muna yung social media para gawin na yung class. At this is muna. I know it's new for us. Tapos sobrang daming adjustments. Pero alam ko kaya natin yan. Kakayanan. Yun lang. Saan makatulong sa online class? Good luck. Tip number five, always check on your Microsoft Teams account. Ang MS Teams, a major na platform na ginagamit ng CAOS or ng PLM when it comes to blended learning. Dito nagaganap ang ating online classes and dito rin din upload ng ating modules, lectures, and assignments. Dito rin natin mas mabilis na nare-reach out ang mga professors bukod pa sa Facebook and Messenger. That is why it is really important to regularly check on your account para maging updated sa mga announcement ng props or di naman kaya sa modifications kapag may assignment. So yeah, always remember to maximize the use of MS Teams depending on your needs. Now for our second category, while making your plates. So here's a big brain tip. Make a list of your plates and their corresponding deadlines. What I mean by deadline is your own deadline. You should not make a deadline later than the actual submission is, but actually a little bit earlier than the actual deadline. So you can avoid cramming and you have ample time before actually submitting your plates. Kasi kadalasan kapag magpapasa ka na, siya pa nagkakaroon ng mga problema. And also remember that your professors doesn't usually accept late submissions. So if you program your mind earlier than their deadline, then there won't be any problem. Also remember that finishing first doesn't always equate to finishing best. Just take your time in doing your plates and just do the best that you can and it all will be better. Hello Arkis Das! So my advice for you today is that gawin muna natin yung mga task, homework, or plates na mas madali before natin gawin yung mga plates na mas mahirap and complex. Para in that way, mas madali natin matatapos ang mga easy homeworks. Then after that, wala ka na isipin na other stuff while doing the more challenging plates. Para di ba, ano, hindi mo na sila iisipin, makapag-focus tayo at makapagbigay tayo ng maraming time sa mga plate natin na mas mahirap at complex. And always keep in mind na tapusin natin and finish one or two plates or tasks per day as much as possible hanggat kaya natin para hindi tayo nagkakram and pagsabay-sabay yung mga gagawin natin pag nasa deadline na. Make sure that your workplace is organized and clean before and after doing your plates. Trust me, Arkista, an organized workspace is a plus 10 sa paggawa ng inyong mga plates. Also, make sure na magdagdag ng extra table katabi ng inyong drafting table para dun yung ilalagay ang mga drafting materials. And if you're like me, na drafting board ang ginagamit, make sure na yung table na bibili nyo ay mayroong pull-out drawer para dun yung nalang ilalagay yung mga drafting materials Bagsak na lang ng bagsak at hindi ka aligaga habang gumagawa ng inyong plates.
if you don't have the motivation to start making your plates, then make the title block first because making that is very time consuming. Once you have the motivation to start your plates, then you can have faster progress with it. When rendering, it is very much advisable to practice to avoid mistakes. Also, you could use samples or swatches so that you could see if your textures, shadows, or colors work together. And the last category for our tips. Other tips that can help you survive the whole thing in general. Always make sure that you guys have the necessary materials for accomplishing your plate. For example, your rendering materials and mediums that are good for one or two months. Short, long, and A4 bond papers are the most commonly used for research works. So you better make sure that you guys have plenty. My tip here is that since we always use short bond papers, I stock a ring since it's cheaper that way and it can last me for more than a semester. Check if there are PDF files of the books that you need to save money! Mag-try kayo mag-search sa net or mag-ask kayo sa inyong mga ate at kuya and you can save it in your phone or in your tablet or in your laptop or you can print it para mas makatipid pa kayo! Hmm. Our next tip is from a podcast and it says that it's okay to lower the bar sometimes because then mga architecture students who always want to raise the bar we want better grades and better looking plates and it's actually a nice thing to have to always strive for excellence but sometimes it leads to normalizing the hustle culture which is very bad for our body and also for our mental health and um sabi nga Kung pagod ka na, pwede kang magpahinga, pero bawal kang sumuko. So, if we need a break, just take it. If we also want a reward and we think we deserve it, go for it. And also, we have to gravitate towards what replenishes our energy. Sabi nga, kailangan natin makinig sa ating mga katawan. At saka, sabi rin dito sa podcast na yun, is we have to empathize with ourselves like how we empathize with others. So, ang tip natin is to it's okay to lower the bar sometimes. Wag. Basta wag. Wag mahihiyang magtanong kung may right dito. Don't be afraid to ask questions sa mga professors o sa mga kaklase mo kung meron kang di maintindihan. Kasi kayo-kayo nalang magkakaklase ang magtutulungan. At sinong prof ang gusto na walang maintindihan ang tinuturuan niya. Kaya huwag kang matakot. Watch architecture-related webinars. Well, the most obvious reason to consider attending webinars may be to have certificates for job applications or maybe for self-improvement on a certain skill or program related to architecture like AutoCAD, Lumion, and Photoshop and other paid license programs. But I guess you already know that. A very important feature of webinars is to learn things that are rarely taught in school. Our professors can only teach us so much, and giving us learning materials is not really a complete answer to that limitation. And it's not their fault at all. By attending webinars, we can learn new things about our field in so many different perspectives. Our general bubble may be biased in the view of being in the city, being a Filipino in general, or maybe being on a certain religion, or maybe on their own personal experiences, like those architects who wouldn't let go of the traditional ways that are obviously obsolete. Let it go, architect. Now, that is not a completely bad, but learning from others with so much different encounters to the profession can help us in understanding things in a new light. And no, that doesn't mean that everything Western is applicable to our setting, okay? But really, for me, I'd say architecture students of today and architects of the future need not only to immerse themselves in architectural online seminars, but also in other fields where architecture can be connected to. Remember, architecture is a field in itself, but architecture is a field that spans almost in every other craft in the world. By doing that, we not only become aware of others' ideal or erroneous state of being, but it also helps us become more compassionate, more humane for others. And that is exactly what architects need to be, now and more than ever.
And that is it for our video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. And sana may natutunan kayo sa mga tips na binigay namin sa inyo. And of course, don't forget to like and subscribe and click on the bell button to get notified every time we upload a new video. Good luck and happy plates, Arquistas. Stay safe. Ciao! Hello mga kasi! I am Miracle, civil engineering student of Pangatasan ng Luzon, Ukraine. Incoming first year ka ba? Nalilito kung tama ba yung pinapasok mo? Kailangan mo ba ng tips and advices para sa darating na school year? Well, stay tuned dahil pinigyan kita ng 10 tips on how you will conquer your CE journey. Let's go! Tip number one, love your calculator. Yan ang pinakaunang na ibibigay ko sa inyong tip dahil real talk guys. Yan ang makakasama nyo sa hirap at ginhawa. Sa lahat ng exams and quizzes, kailangan nyo to kaya huwag nung huwag nyo kalilimutan at ihihiwalay sa inyo. Sa simula pa lang, dapat gamay mo na kung paano gamitin ang inyong calculator, know the techniques and shortcuts. Para pagdating ng exams, you can use your time wisely. Tip number two. Listen and take good notes. There are times talaga na nag-zone out tayo dahil sa anto. But we really need to focus on what our professor has to say kasi merong mga concepts and techniques sila na sinasabi na biglang, surprise! Nasa quiz or nasa exams. It is very important to take down notes para may reference tayo pagdating ng pagre-review. Never kang umasa sa notes ng katabi mo. Mas maganda kasi kapag personalize mo yung notes so that when you review, you can recall exactly the lesson. Tip number three, practice solving problems. Guys, sa engineering, never magiging sapat yung given samples ni Prof. So, you can buy books or you can search PDF related sa subject. The more problems that you solve, the more that you will understand the concept. So, dapat din, kapag nag-solve kayo, try more difficult problems. Huwag yung halos same sa binigay ni Prof. Para walang gulatan tuwing exams at saka quizzes. Guys, always prepare for the worst. Guys, always prepare for the worst. No! Tip number four. Never hesitate to ask questions. Especially on concepts or solutions you cannot fully understand. Sabi nga nung kanta, Huwag mahihiyang magtanong. Huwag mahihiyang magtanong. Kung may shortcut ba ito. <laughs> Got it! Or merong madaling way para makuha mo yung solution sa isang problem. You can ask your prof, your classmates, or yung mga kuya at atin nyo sa school. Better kung mas marami kayong matatanungan para makagain kayo ng more insights. Kuya, paano ba ulit mag-derive? Ganon! Tip number 
5. Figure out when you are most productive. Is it morning, afternoon, or evening? This is important so that you can set time to review. Effective to kasi meron talagang mga times na inaantok tayo, naguguto, or madaling madistract. So, find the best time that you can work more productively without any distractions. Pag na-assess mo na yung sarili mo, then set your routine with self-discipline. Nagre-review pa pala ako. Tip number six, form a group study. Sa CE, kailangan mo talaga ng mga masasandalan kaibigan na tutulong sa'yo sa pag-aaral. Studying with your friends will not only introduce you to other viewpoints, but can also give you encouragement. But, do not be dependent sa group learning. At the end of the day, mag-isa ka pa rin take ng exam. So, make sure na madadala mo ang lahat ng pinag-aralan mo with your friends. Tip number seven, teach someone else. One of the most effective ways of ensuring that you understand something is by explaining it to someone else. Mas nagiging familiar tayo sa concept kapag nagagawa na natin tong ituro sa iba. Parang kapag exam, sabihin mo na lang, ay turo ko na to eh. Ay turo ko na to kahapon. Yung isang araw. Topic namin to. Noon. Mm. Tip number eight. Do not be lazy. Alam kong marami sa atin ang mahilig mag-cram at parang talent na yung pagpo-procrastinate. Pasok natin ang time management. If you are given assignments or projects, do it ahead of time. Kaysa naman magsabay-sabay yung requirements, matatambakan ka pa. Huwag nang tama rin para mas mahaba ang time mo for review and doing stuff you like. Tip number nine, set your priorities plus have self-discipline. Sometimes we tend to forget our priorities because we are easily distracted. Sasabihin mo, mag-aaral na talaga ako bukas, mag-aaral na ako ngayon, mag-aaral na ako sa susunod na araw. But we found ourselves scrolling through news feeds. Or nag add to cart or isa pang G sa ML or sa LOL. Nothing against that. But if you set your mind to your priorities, you can manage your time productively. Condition, control, and always remind yourself of your priorities. <coughs> Lastly, tip number 10. Believe in yourself and believe in God. Magtiwala ka na kaya mo at magtiwala ka na kakayanin mo. Kakayanin natin tong lahat. Walang madaling course or program kaya walang makaiiwas sa failure. But always remember, you may fail but you are not a failure. Always be positive because positive thoughts attracts positive outcomes. So this sums up the 10 tips that will help you in your CE journey. I hope to see you around the campus when everything goes back to normal. Once again, I'm Miracle. Bye! So again, welcome back to Juxtapose Presidents of Line. So while waiting for our next speaker, for the meantime, we will be reading some of your comments and reactions na. So uh, a while ago, sabi dito is a shout out from Rizal Technolo Technological University, College of Engineering, Architecture, and Technology. So welcome. Uh, this is from Martin Lugay. So good vibes daw, sabi niya. 
And meron pa dito from Mark Joshua. Good afternoon po. Uh, I am a grade, well, grade 12 student from National Teachers College. So, nakakatuwa kasi nakakarating din sa kanila tong ano natin, live stream. Live siya natin, especially na grade 12 pa lang siya, hindi pa siya yes, college, Yes, to think diba? the SHS pa lang siya, tapos nakikita yeah. siya sa mga webinar na ganito. Good job yan, Mark Joshua. At least ngayon pa lang, malalaman mo na yung mga bagay na pwede mo matutunan in the near future kung gusto mo ba i-pursue yung architecture or engineering yeah, or other maybe yeah. architecture engineering. Bakit ikaw ba nung grade 12 ka ba? May ano ka na ba sa mga ganyang bagay? <laughs> Nanarag ka na rin ba ng mga live stream dati? Uh, regarding sa gusto mong kunin course. Siguro ano lang, nagsisearch lang, ganyan. Pero mm. siguro isang advantage din na may mga webinars na ngayon is mas accessible siya sa lahat, di ba? Kasi yeah, before, true. hindi talaga, usually pag kailangan mong umattend seminars talaga, kailangan mo talaga mm-hmm. umunta doon, di ba? So at least ngayon, mas convenient. Pwede yeah. nakahiga ka lang sa bahay, tas may matutunan ka na, di ba? So maganda yung ganun. So, mm-hmm. I hope yung mga audience natin today is madami silang natutunan dun sa first speaker natin. And sana, madami din silang matutunan dun sa second speaker natin mamaya. So, yes. guys, we're giving a shout out. So, please comment down your name, your section, block, or course para naman mabigyan namin kayo ng shout out. So, kanina naalala mo, partner, nag uh, play tayo ng mga Archie Ventures. Yeah. And um, one Archie Venture is yung mga memories ng face-to-face classes. At may nakita akong comment dito. Sabi ni Prince Sabi Alvin niya. Jose, Kaop Freshies can't relate. Actually, kahit naman yung kahit naman yung engineering Freshies or kahit na sinong okay. Freshies, they can relate. Hindi sila makaka-relate. Masyado. Yeah. So, Since hindi pa nila na-experience mag-face-to-face nang may, ano, may concept na gagawa ka ng plates, magpupuyat ka, yes. papasok ka ng walang ligo minsan, di ba? <laughs> Guys, kailangan niyo for pasok. sure, sa mga CE, walang katapusang mga practice problems, mm. mga kung ano-ano formula, ang mga mm. ginagawa nila dyan. Ayan, so EJ from Art of Venturi, tinambaka ng workload. Ayun Ooh. lang. Pero at least may During time pa din para, time, para manood ng webinar, di ba? Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Mark Joshua, Archie po, Archie wish me luck this coming PL mat. Padayon. Padayon, Isko! Yeah. Padayon. <laughs> yeah. Sana. And congratulations sana sa mga nakapasok na yes, mga, yes, ano, yes, ka-o yes, sa ating ano, program. So, Mark Joshua, yeah. We're looking forward to see you on our college next academic year, maybe. So, we hope makita ka pa rin namin ulit sa mga gantong webinars. And, sana next year, face-to-face na para makasalubong ka namin sa hallway ng GCA. At maranasan nyo na. Yes. Maranasan nyo na ang matulog sa tabi-tabi dahil walang tulog. Ayan. So, good yeah, so, luck po. Mm-mm. Good luck to our incoming freshies. And of course, as well as tayo. Kasi mahirap talaga during this time, di ba? But yeah, I think our speaker is ready today. So I hope you're all refreshed from that. Actually, it's not a short break. It's actually a long break that yes. we had. And I also do hope that you are now ready to listen and welcome our next speaker. So without further ado, let me introduce today's second speaker. He is a graduate of architecture at University of Santo Tomas with a master's degree in architectural conservation from Escuela Nacion de Conservación, Restauración y Museografía in Mexico. Wow. So he is the project director and consulting architect in Digiscript Philippines Incorporated, the principal architect in MNL Solutions Incorporated, the project director in Escuela Taller de Intramuros, dated 2008 to February 2014, and Chairman, Committee on Culture, UNESCO National Commission. He is also a lecturer and speaker on heritage conservation, preservation, documentation, and adaptive reuse of buildings. So to present to you regarding roles of architects and craftsmanship, craftsmanship techniques in restoration of heritage buildings, let us all welcome architect Michael F. Manalo. There you go. Okay, Good afternoon, architect. 
Thanks, Dorothy. Thanks, Andre. Nakatuwa. Pinapakinggan ko kayo kanina. And uh, brings back a lot of memories um, from the yeah. time when, when I was still in college in USD. No. Uh, Medyo nilis ako ng konti dun sa, ano, dun sa topic. Um, uh, sure. Because I was, I, was uh, I was reading through the program and I thought it might be better if uh, ang pag-usapan natin would be how architecture and engineering uh, um, exist within conservation. Something like that. Pero papasok sure. din ng konti yung, ano, yung, yung craftsmanship. Um, and... Yeah, nakakatawa lang yung introduction kasi parang 80 years old na po tayo. <laughs> oh, th- It's our pleasure. Thank you. Oh, oh, yeah. Thanks so much and thank you to CAUP and thank you to ACES. Thanks to everyone in PLM. Uh, thank you for inviting and, and involving the National Commission for Culture and the Arts uh, in, in this lecture. Uh, yes. Okay. I, I was wondering if, if you already got my... Um, my presentation. Yeah, I think, I think it's so. Going it's to load. going to be presented on the screen. Yeah. yeah. Okay, Great. so Wonderful. I guess our viewers are ready to uh, listen to your, I uh, for sure, uh, insightful talk. So you can go ahead. Nako, Mark it. Insightful, so but talaga. Sana insightful <laughs> nga. Oh, um, okay. okay. Uh, I'll try to be as insightful as I can. Um, good afternoon to everyone, and I hope you had a good lunch. Uh, I guess it was a working lunch no, with, with that very, very interesting uh, talk earlier. Um, so, as, as I said earlier, uh, siguro ang i-discuss ko is heritage na architecture and engineering. Since magkasama kayong dalawa dito, yung architecture at engineering, normally nag-aano tayo, nag-aaway tayo, palagi natin sinasabi, uh, mas magaling yung isa kesa dun sa isa. But um, actually, at one point in time, isang tao lang naman yan eh yung architect sa engineer. So, uh, next slide please. Let's let's see the next slide. Yeah. Okay, so let's start with the Spanish period. Um You guys are from PLM, diba? So, I don't know uh, and and others na narinig ko may mga nagjo-join sa atin from ano, from from other universities. Uh I don't know if you're familiar with this building kasi hindi na ganito yung itsura niya. Um, ito yung aduana, intendensa, kung tawag nila rin ngayon. Um, ruins na siya, nandun siya sa may Pasig River, uh, pero nasa Intramuros area rin siya. Um, it's in ruins now, but um, uh, this photo is from the 1840s. This, not, not photo, no? this, uh, this watercolor is from the 1840s, nung bago pa lang si, ano, si aduana building. So, ito yung, medyo masasabi natin, height ng Spanish period. Ano. Um, uh, ito ay isa sa mga pinakamagandang building nung ginawa siya. So, actually, nung 1850, may nagsulat na dalawang, ano, dalawang authors. Sulat sila ng libro. Tapos, nung describe nila tong building na to, ang sinabi nila, uh, without any doubt, ito ang pinakamagandang building sa Pilipinas. Sa Pilipinas, ha? hindi sa Manila lang, sa buong Pilipinas. This was the most beautiful building in the entire Philippines. And um, next slide. Let's see the next slide. Yeah. So this is this is that building in plan. No? Uh, baka, baka yung iba sa atin natatawa kasi isipin mo, eh, gumawa lang siya ng ano, gumawa lang siya ng isang part, tas mirror lang niya, tapos yun yung building, <laughs> tapos na siya. Diba? Actually, mirror mirror lang. It's it's very modular. Um, so, makikita ninyo, kung gagawin nyo siyang isang quadrant, diba? if you divide it by four, so you have four quadrants, four equal quadrants. No? Uh, and they're basically all identical, yung four quadrants na yon, Almost all identical. Kung hatiin nyo siya sa gitna, parang mirror siya. Kung hatiin nyo siya, pahalang, parang mirror din siya. Um, Building is very efficient, actually. Very efficiently designed. Uh, oh, yun, yung, ano, yun yung isang masasabi natin dito. Ano, na dinisen nyo siya para mabilis siyang gawin. Yun yung, ano, yun yung isang, ano rin, yung isang kailangan nating alalahanin. Uh, but, next slide. Uh, I don't know kung um, naituro sa inyo yung mga rules of proportion, pero marami tayong ginagamit na, ano, na, na devices, no? para ma-achieve ang proportion na maganda sa isang building. 
um, itong building na to gumamit sa ng mga rules ng proportion like for example uh, this one is the golden uh, the golden rectangle na sinasabi nila so we find the golden rectangle in use in many many other classical buildings like the Parthenon um, and other European buildings so this being a building uh, built during the Spanish period yung uh, yung heritage na yon no? yung knowledge na yon ng uh, composition da? ng uh, proportion ginamit din nila dito so um, hindi siya makikita sa plano so ito ay nahanap lang ng mga nananaliksik dito sa building na to uh, nakita nila na wow gumamit pala yung ano yung arkitekto nito ng mga ano ng golden rectangles ang sulit na katuwa kasi meron um, meron pa sa ng ibang pictures kung paano na ginamit itong golden rectangle so makikita niyo na it frames the, um, the 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 central bay no the two floors perfectly sobrang perfect na tapos yung ano na yung mga curves na touch the edges and then yun din yung magdidikta for example kung nasan yung pinto so Maraming uses si ano si si uh, si golden section golden rectangle. Um, this is only one. Um, okay, the break ko ng surprise. Uh, kasi hindi arkitekto yung gumawa nito. Yep, said it right. Hindi po arkitekto yung gumawa nito. Ang gumawa po nito ay military engineer. So uh, actually, for all of the engineers um, out here, no listening. Um, there was a time no, during the ano, during the Spanish period, especially, na ang pinapadala dito sa Pilipinas puro mga engineers and uh, marami sa mga buildings natin, yung mga government buildings especially, gawa ito ng mga military engineers. So um, this is a legacy of engineering, uh, of course, of architecture, no, because both the architects and engineers back then. Uh, had to go through the same rigor, had to go through the same, ano, uh, the same topics, the same classes, and all of that. Um, kasama na dito, for example, uh, yung mga topics such as, paano ba mag-cut ng, ano, ng, ng stone? Diba? How do you cut stone? Tapos, paano ba natin magagawa ang isang arch? Uh, paano tayo nakakagawa ng isang dome? Lahat to, out of stone. Eh. Ngayon, madali lang kasi yung cemento ipoporma mo lang siya, bubuhusan mo ng semento na parang liquid siya, and then you wait for it to harden. Dati isipin ninyo, everything was, everything was in stone, di ba? Uh, or brick. So, para ma-achieve mo yung mga forms na gusto mong ano, magawa, isipin mo, paano ko ba, paano ko siya tatabasin yung stone? And ano yung mga skills na necessary? So, lahat itong mga skills na to, pinapag-aralan uh, both by the architects and the engineers uh, back then. No? But as I said, dito sa Pilipinas, most of the buildings, puro mga engineers. Uh, the name of this military engineer na nag-design ano, nag, nag nito uh, ng aduana is uh, Co uh, Tomas Cortes. So he was a military engineer and he was in Manila from about eight, uh, early 1820s up to uh, his death no, in, ano, in the late 1830s. Um, so this is, uh, this is the sort of building that they, they built during the Spanish period. Um, ibang iba, ibang iba. Then, for example, next slide. Um, very different from very different from buildings uh, from the American period. No? So uh, this is just um, to illustrate to you kung paano Plinano ng mga Amerikano yung Manila. Uh, nakita niya siya doon sa right side. Um, siguro na, yung mga mas advanced na sa, ano nila, ano, sa classes nila, yung mga nakakatanda pa ng face-to-face -face classes. Uh, siguro natatanda niyo in your history classes yung pangalan Daniel Burnham. Uh, or kung nakapunta na kayo sa Baguio, alam niyo yung Burnham Park. Uh, so si Daniel Burnham ay isang tanyag na urban planner at arkitekto. Uh, nung simula ng siglo XX. No? So, 20th century. And then, pinag-aral siya sa Paris. So, ang mga konsepto niya ng architecture, it's very European. Not just European, very Parisian. So, nung plinano niya yung Manila, ang naisip niya palagi kung saan ang galing, of course, yung education niya. No? Uh, Ecole de Beaux-Arts. 
in, in, in Paris. So, doon siya nag-aral. So, ang concept niya for Manila is a tropicalized uh, Paris or something like that. No? So, kung makikita ninyo, may mga grid siya, pero interspersed within those grids, may mga diagonal siya, tapos mahilig siya sa mga rotonda, tapos uh, uh, what's this, may may mga streets na nag radiate out of ano, out of the rotonda to give it uh, to give it that beautiful view no so magbubukas siya ng views and nagaano rin siya nag-integrate din siya ng um, ng very nice landscapes uh, sa ano niya, sa city planning um, this was also the time when um, usong-uso yung city beautiful movement so yon ginagamit nila yung term na yun, city beautiful so ang isang siyudad ay hindi lang dapat functional, maganda rin dapat siya. Uh, ginamit na ng mga Amerikano, of course, to tell the whole world na, um, uy, well, nakakagawa kami ng magagandang cities. Hindi lang Europe ang nakakagawa ng magagandang cities. It was their, uh, it was their way of saying na world power na po kami. Diba? So, that was their way of announcing it. And the Philippines was one of their showcases. No? Um, next slide. So, nag-hire siya ng ano, nag-hire siya ng um, ng isang arkitekto para i uh, para isagawa yung mga planong ginawa niya, 'di ba? So, gumawa siya ng plan in 1905. Kaya lang, sabi niya, hindi naman ako makaka sa Manila. So, ano ginawa niya? Uh, pagbalik niya sa US, he hand picked, 'di ba? Pumili siya ng isang arkitekto na feeling niya fit for the job. Paano niya hinanap yung arkitektong 'yon? So, isip niya, okay, parang dapat pareho kami mag-isip. So, nakanap siya ng isang arkitekto, si William Parsons. Uh, nag-aral din si Parsons sa Paris. So, parang isang tabas lang sila talaga. Uh, and then, um, ito makita natin sa right side, Parsons was hired for the position as consulting architect. ba? Diba? Um, ang maganda dito, in-highlight yung efficiency and practicality. Kanina nakita natin yun dun sa, ano, diba? dun sa Spanish period. Efficiency, military efficiency, military practicality, di ba? Puro pare-pareho yung ano niya, yung modules niya. It's modular na plan. So, um, if you if you use a modular plan, pwede mo siyang ulit-ulitin up to infinity. Kahit, uh, kahit gano'ng kalaki yung building mo, i-extend mo lang siya. So, you just extend the modules, multiply the modules. So, si Parsons, parang ganun din siya mag-isip, very modular, but there was something else na ginamit ni Parsons, which was reinforced concrete. Diba? So, ito yung time na uh, papasok na. Actually, hindi nga papasok. Ito yung time na medyo malaki na ang, ano, ang use ng reinforced concrete. Pero, hindi rin sila sigurado kung ano yung exact science niya. Nakakatuwa. nakakatuwa. So, um, for, for this project, Actually, kung pumunta kayo sa PGH, uh, ay, huwag kayong pumunta sa PGH kasi baka maka-COVID tayo. Um, uh, if you go to PGH, yung building na, ano, yung ipapakita namin na building dito, uh, it's already uh, being restored. So, this is dorm one. Uh, yung lumang-lumang nurses home, hindi yung kay Thomas Mapua. So, it's made out of reinforced concrete. And dito natin makita na Sobrang bago pa lang talaga yung mga technologies ng reinforced concrete na ginagamit nila. Uh, it's so new na iba-iba yung mga solutions na nilalagay nila in, ano, in just one building. Um, other buildings na dinesign niya, so you see uh, dito sa left side, medical school. Uh, so this is Calderon Hall, 1910. Army and Navy Club, uh, opposite uh, Manila Hotel. That's from 1911. Um, next slide. <laughs> So other other things at Parsons Design, Paco Municipal Market, that's from uh, 1911, um, and then yung ano natin, yung subject natin, di ba? Si Philippine General Hospital. Uh, this was uh, this was begun in 1910. Uh, so um, si Parsons, being an architect, in kanina engineer, di ba? So eto naman, ba naman yung pinanggalingan niya. Pagdating niya dito sa Manila. Tinignan niya kung ano yung mga buildings na meron. Actually, maraming mga interviews sa kanya about that. So, dun sa mga interviews, kinakwento niya kung ano yung mga na-observe niya. And na-observe niya, sabi niya, 
yung mga simbahan malalaki, 'di ba? And then yung mga walls niya, uh, parang ano talaga, one meter or two meters thick, sobrang thick ng walls. 'Yun yung sinasabi niya. Um, sabi na on the other hand, meron silang tinatawag na yung mga bahay na bato. And natuwa siya dun sa ano, sa sa bahay na bato, 'di ba? Na meron siyang kahoy on top of yung masonry na ground floor. Second floor is wood. Tapos parang lumulutang nga. But ang nakakuha pa ng pansin niya, yung kapis windows. So, tuwang-tuwa siya with the kapis windows. Which is why uh, maraming mga buildings niya, nag-utilize din siya ng, ano, ng, ng kapis windows. So, um, you, you have yung letter B, uh, yung background niya, di ba? So, Bozar is the name of the school, Ecole de Bozar. Um, education, and he might also have had an exposure uh, to California-style buildings, diba? um, And uh, at this time, yung ano naman niya, yung counterpart niya sa California would have been John Gallen Howard. So John Gallen Howard was producing buildings uh, which look very, very, very modern. Pero modern siya kasi tinanggal niya lang yung ornament. So basically, parang boxes, tapos minsan may mga arko. So it's a mission style na parang sobrang-sobrang simple. So makikita natin yan dun sa works din yan, no? ni Parsons, yung sa right side na pictures. Parang classical siya, kaya lang kung titingnan niyo ng mabuti, it's really simplified classical architecture. Diba? Uh, maybe you can liken it to some postmodern buildings, I don't know. Next slide, please. Um, so these are the other works of uh, of, um, of, uh, of William Parsons. So makita niyo dun sa Philippine Normal University dorm. Uh, ginamit niya yung ano yung language ng bahay na bato. Pero uh, in, instead of um, of uh, adobe, ang ginamit na niya is reinforced concrete. No, um, and then University Hall from 1913 is thoroughly thoroughly uh, classical and bosar. But um, he really had that fascination with Philippine Hispanic architecture. But yun nga no, yung kanina rin yung sinabi natin about the aduana building, scale and proportion was very very important for ano for for this guy. No, kasi yan yung training talaga nila sa ano, sa Eco de Bosa. Next slide, please. So Philippine General Hospital. Um, Nag-start siya ng planning in 1907, tapos na nagawa siya in 1910. So, ito yung isa sa mga unang-unang proyekto ng mga Amerikano nung, ano, nung dumating sila. Um, imagine, 1898, di ba, nag-change ng hands ang Philippines from, uh, from Spanish to American. Uh, but they had to establish a lot of things and um, most of all yung system. No? So, nag naglinis muna and all of that. And then, in the middle of ano, in the middle of the first decade, so 1905, dun palang nila sinabi, okay, pwede na tayo magplano, de ba? So let's plan our cities, let's plan our towns. Uh, kaya nila kinoa si ano si si Burnham. And one of the ano, one of the products is the Philippine General Hospital. Um, okay, next slide. So this is the administration. Uh, building of, uh, no, of of the PGH, no? so this is from 1910. Um, uh, what's this? So nakasulat dun sa ano sa sa, sa baba na Parsons best design designs combined a successful mixture and abstraction. Uh, so abstraction, hindi sa hindi niya literal na kinopya, di ba? So kinuha niyang idea pero uh, nung nung in-execute na niya, di ba, yung, yung itsura niya isn't exactly like how, uh, how they did it in, um, in Philispanic architecture, di ba, from the Spanish period. So, medyo may pagka-industrial yung building niya, yung, especially in the, no, in the choice of materials. No? Um, but he kept a lot of the elements. So, yung pitched roof, Diba? Kasi nga maulan dito, so dapat talaga yung ulan would, ano, yung tubig ulan would, uh, would instantly be uh, uh, um, taken out of the roof. No? So kaya pitched yung roof niya, 
And then he also favored deep archways. Kita rin niya yan sa ano sa sa architecture dito nung pagdating niya. Shaded porches and covered loggias to keep the heat away from the interiors of the buildings. Okay, next slide. So this is our building in question. So ito yung dorm one building. Tawag nila ngayon kasi ang code name nila sa PCH is dorm one. Uh, but it used to be the first nurses home. Um, yung iba sa atin siguro ang alam na nurses home. Yung kay ano yung kay Thomas Mapua na sa likod niya to. Uh, so ginawa siya after nito. Um, so the uh, the director of the uh, of the PGH wrote a book to commemorate nga yung construction ng building. So ang sinabi niya, the nurses home is one of the most attractive buildings in the entire group, being well proportioned both inside and out. So kita natin dito, um, gumamit siya ng ano, gumamit siya ng arches. Pero actually kung tatanggalin mo nga yung arches, it it actually looks like a very very modern building. Hindi siya mukhang ano, ano? hindi siya mukhang yung sobrang traditional uh, not even like a Spanish period building. So, ibang-iba na yung conventions na ginamit ni, ano, ni, ni William Parsons dito. But a lot of it owes to um, his use of reinforced concrete and the freedom that it gave uh, William Parsons no? uh, to, to realize his, ano, his works. Um, next slide, please. So, ito yung picture ng isang room. So makikita niyo na yung ano na yung doors na hindi po siya windows door siya. Uh, these are parang nagsa slide fold, no? Slide fold na doors and then kapis sila lahat, no? So meron din siyang louver doors pero yung mga kama nila pwede nilang i-roll palabas kasi may mga balconies. Pag masyado daw mainit, pwede nilang buksan yung mga pinto and then ilabas yung mga ano, yung mga kama nila out into the balconies para medyo mas malamig. Um, we have to remember na uh, most of the first nurses in the Philippines back then were Americans. So, hindi sila sanay dun sa ano natin, sa weather conditions natin. So, para, isa, para sa isang Americano, uh, especially ngayon, no? ngayong, ngayong tag-init, sobrang init talaga for them yan. So, minsan nilalabas nila yung mga beds nila sa balconies. Next slide. Um, this is another photo, a view of the dining hall. Um, next slide. And then, ito yung reception room. So, same ano rin sila, same dimension sila ng dining hall. Um, this would also show you yung efficiency na in planning. So, uh, minirror lang rin niya what, uh, what exists on the left. Nilagay na dun sa right side. Uh, okay, next slide. And then this is the um, nakalagay piazza pero nagkamali siya. Loja dapat yun. So um, it's a corridor that opens up to the garden, to the lawn in front. So makikita nyo, ito yung parang nagiging tambayan ng mga, ng mga nurses. Pero on the left side, makikita nyo rin na merong mga, ano, merong mga uh, nag-fold na kapis doors. So dyan nila pwedeng ilabas yung mga kama nila pag masyado mainit uh, sa loob. Next slide. Um, so this slide only tells you na it was one of the most modern buildings. No? So sinasabi niya, um, uh, nakakatawa kasi yung toilets yung, yung describe niya dito. So sinasabi niya, hexagonal tile ang ginamit. Tapos merong showers, merong bathtub, merong three wash basins, two closets, and one slop hopper, slop sink, diba? And then kitchen and pantry. So for for them, uh, then as today, uh, the Americans pride themselves with uh, with technological um, uh, innovations. No? So dito rin, sinasabi nga nila na yung technology na pinaka, ano, pinaka updated, yun yung ginamit nila, pati yung refrigerator, Leonard Porcelain Refrigerator. So, yun yung in, ano, niya, yung in install nila san. Okay, next slide. So, this is what it looks like um, uh, when, uh, when it was built. Uh -oh. Pero hindi ka, ano, ka rusty yung corrugated ano, niya, GI na. Ano. 
uh, the roof. Next slide. So these are the two sides of it. Okay, next slide. This is, I know, the, these are two uh, pages from the 1911 publication. Uh, and ito yung original plans niya. So makikita ninyo how similar it is no, to yung, uh, yung planning kanina na sinabi natin na modular lang siya, it has to be efficient. Ang pinagkaiba lang talaga uh, dito is isa lang yung staircase niya, hindi niya mineral dun sa kabila, and yung mga banyo niya would just be in one side. But everything else, everything else is symmetrical. The entire building is also symmetrical. Uh, um, yeah. Next slide. Yan. So, um, ventilation, ginamit din ni Parsons yung, ano, yung mga learnings niya dito sa Pilipinas. So, Kung makikita niyo yung building, uh, meron, siyang mga, uh, meron siyang mga ventanillas and then above the walls, meron din siyang mga lusuta ng hangin para yung warm air hindi nagsistay sa isang kwarto. So, nagsisirculate and it gets flushed out. Okay, next slide. So, this was the building when it was completed. Um, so, naka-highlight control of light and ventilation. Um, he did it through yung mga extended na roof and also yung paggamit niya ng mga, um, mga corridors na covered, no? what he called the logias. So, ito yung mga naka-arco dun sa ground floor. Next slide. So, he used the Khan system. No? And the Khan system was a product of the Trust Concrete Steel Company, or Trust Con. So, itong CAN system ginamit rin sa mga ibang buildings like the Army and Navy Club and the Manila Hotel. Uh, sa kanya din naman yung mga, ano, mga buildings. Yeah, so, he also prescribed it there. No, but... Actually, in, uh, it actually figured in a publication of the CAN uh, system, no, in Trust, uh, Trust Concrete Steel Company. So they had an international publication uh, where in sinabi nila na in many parts of the world, kahit na nag earthquake hindi na iba yung mga buildings na ginamitan ng products ng Truscon. So that was one big advertisement. And true to it, uh, we still have Dorm 1 after today. Uh, okay, next slide. So this is a... Um, Yung photo is the actual, no? So this is the actual na nahanap namin dun sa site. And then we researched, uh, we went through yung mga, uh, what do you call this? Catalogs ng Truscon uh, to look for the CAN system, no? And they, we sort of hit, uh, we hit gold when we found yung high rib. So, the name of the actual na system is high rib para siyang ano para siyang uh, it's a sheet of metal tapos ang ginawa nila gumawa sila ng small incisions and then inangat para maging textured so kinakapitan siya ng ano kinakapitan siya ng konkreto kaagad kasi nga may texture siya at the same time it's very high grade na steel no so the high grade steel uh makes it parang ideal na uh, for yung mga buhos, yung sinasabi natin ng buhos na mga walls. So, if you go to this building today, um, parang kang pumasok sa isang vault ng, ng banko. No? So, it's built so solidly na yung sa ground floor, ikot ka, laki makitang hollow blocks, puro buhos lahat. So, um, even the, the floors, same technology then ang ginamit nila. So, where we were lucky to find uh, the catalogs, um, but more than the catalogs, what's important are the calculations that, uh, that were used no? to be able to design the engineering part of uh, the structural part of this, uh, of this building. Uh, next slide. So I guess here you can really appreciate kung paano nagsasani puwersa na yung architecture saka ang structural engineering particularly. No? Kasi kung wala yung innovations uh, in structural engineering, particularly in reinforced concrete engineering, 
um, hindi tayo makaka ano, hindi, hindi tayo magkakaroon ng mga ganitong buildings no? uh, built in the scale and the form that uh, William Parsons did it uh, um, na sinunod niya yung plans ni Daniel Burnham also so this is still yung rib laugh naman na ano na uh, product ng high rib uh, trust con. Next. But we also have ransom bars. So ransom bars, yung mga ano, yung mga twisted na bars, diba? uh, iba pa yung itsura nila compared to yung mga reinforcement bars na ginagamit natin today. In today, hindi na siya twisted. So the ransom bars are from a much earlier period. So, ito, late 1800s, yung, ano, yung uh, na naimbento yung ransom bars. Pero, ginamit pa rin siya dito sa building. So, dito mo nakita na it's a building that had put together different engineering solutions no, to come up with, ano, to come up with, uh, with, um, with a building. So, next slide. Uh, here are flat bars also. Medyo nagulat kami kasi um, kasama ng mga ransom bars, meron din siya mga flat na bars. Walang katraction-traction. Walang kakapit-kapit. So, we also had that um, uh, shown to the engineers uh, na nag-consult. Okay, next slide. And then here, um, may fragment siya of cement roof tiles. So, Pati yung roof tiles na ginamit nila, cemento. So, hindi na yung parang sa Spanish period na clay, uh, gumamit sila ng cemento. Um, this could be seen as, ano, as um, something that's not so good for the Philippines. Kasi yung, yung uh, what do you call this? The clay tiles uh, would deflect the heat. No? So, pag tumama yung heat sa isang clay tile, hindi na irradiate sa loob. No? So, Pag, pag tumama, it just deflects it. Pabalik. No? But with cement, diba? pag dapuan siya ng heat, irradiate niya pa loob. So that, uh, that is one of the um, siguro, uh, problems of new materials. No? Hindi pa natin talagang totally alam kung paano sila nag-behave back then. No? Okay, next. And then gumamit din siya ng granolithic na floor tiles. So, it's it's actually a, a, a very interesting building. Um, uh, it didn't only um, pride itself with technological innovations. Ano? Um, it also used um, cement, for example, creatively. This is a cement uh, This is a cement finish. So, basically, cement to na kinulayan and then nilagyan ng marble chips tapos sinander. No? So, when you sand it, you get this uh, this this kind of ano, this kind of look, no? but um, he also used wooden floor planks, ba, on wood sleepers. So, I thought this is this it's really amazing na yung original floor planks from 1910, yun parin yung floor planks na installed on up to this very day. Okay, next slide. Uh, ito na yung mga hexagonal floor tiles and um, they also used marble, uh, Carrara marble, no? the white one, alternating with, ano, with the black to uh, give it a harlequin pattern. And then gumamit rin siya ng colored, tinted na red na polished concrete. Next slide. So, okay. Yung left side, yung picture dati, uh, yun yung 1911 na publication. On the right side, Sadly, ganyan namin siya inabutan. So, nobody even knew na historical yung building, na important pala yung building. Um, even kami, nung tinawag kami, when, ano, uh, we, we were called in by the administration of, ano, of uh, the Philippine General Hospital, we really just thought it was a building from like the 1970s, 1980s. Hindi namin alam, to our surprise, na 1910 pala siya ginawa and then inaugurated in 1911. So, it's uh it, it's quite a blessing and a shock for for everyone uh na nakakakita nito no um okay next slide please so et eto siya actually eto yung eto yung before namin sa ginawa so hindi pa rin tayo tapos dito sa work so you won't see photos of how it is uh 
after. So puro before yung photos natin. So you can you can really see na it it really doesn't look like anything uh, anything much. No? It's, it's not an architectural marvel or anything like that. Uh, okay, next slide. So parang yung trabaho natin was really to uncover this uh, the 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 layers of history dito sa building na to. Um, very interesting because uh, at the end of the day, um, nung, nung uh, medyo natatanggal na yung mga layers na in nila, nagulat rin yung mga taga-PGH. And that's when they really said na we have to do something about the other buildings also. No, they have to restore it. Next slide, please. So these are uh, more photos, verandas terraces. Closed off sila, and then makita nyo yung mga arches, sinaraduhan na rin, uh, and then tinagtagan na lang ng mga windows. So, talagang um, medyo ibang-iba na yung form niya from the, ano, from the Parsons na building. Next slide. <coughs> so, this one, uh, you can see the original main door, um, nawala na yung, ano, yung, yung main door niya, na grills. And then... Since tinaas yung, ano, yung surrounding na kalye, uh, nawala na rin yung mga, ano, yung mga ventilation na, uh, ng silong. So, nahihirapan na rin yung mga tao na pumasok doon sa loob ng silong. So, hindi na nila rin ma-maintain yung silong. Okay, next slide. And then, this is uh, one of the rooftop na mga balconies niya. Um, so, makita ninyo na medyo deteriorated na rin talaga. Uh, first, uh, first off, yung, yung mga GI sheets, medyo deteriorated. And then, you can see yung slab niya, yung, yung floor slab niya. Uh, medyo masama na rin yung condition nung, ano, nung uh, what do you call this? Yung waterproofing nila. Okay, next slide. Um, this is how dark it is inside kasi sinaraduhan na nila lahat ng windows halos and um, sinaraduhan nila yung mga original na openings nag-add sila ng vinyl tile so uh, all in all you have a shadow na lang of the original building na ano na natira next slide so we what we did was to tell them na etong mga in red dun sa plan, um, eto yung mga ide demolish. So, we have to create a demolition plan for this building uh, para rin ma, um, maibalik siya dun sa original na configuration um, as the Parsons, uh, William Parsons na building. Next slide. So, all of these had to be uh, also um, a lot, a lot of the doors had to be replaced. Uh, some of them had to be removed. Some of the originals, like yung nasa left side, pinaka left, yung first na photo, uh, ito ni restore lang. But yung iba talagang tinanggal. Next slide. So, ang maganda dito, if you can look, uh, take a look at the first door on the left. So, ito yung dating, uh, yung original configuration ng doors nila. Um, ang system na, na dinesign ni Parsons was, may double doors na malalaki, and then, meron louvered na doors yung nakikita natin sa harap niya. So, ang sinasabi niya is, if you wanted privacy inside your room, you close the double doors na solid. Diba? But if you felt that it was too warm, pwede mong buksan yung double doors and leave the louvered na, ano, na doors na nakasarado. So that gave them privacy, but at the same time, it, uh, it also provided airflow. No? So yung ventilation was very, very important to William Parsons. Okay, next slide. Um, ito na yung, ano, ito na yung uh, toilet. So nandun pa rin yung mga, ano, yung mga ibang original na elements, like yung mga original na uh, na mga lababo are still there, the hexagonal tiles. But um, sadly, everything had to be uh, taken down um, simply because kailangan ng ayusin yung waterproofing kasi may mga tulok na sa, uh, ano, sa lower floor. So we really had to take everything out. But what 
could be put back, we are putting back. Like, for example, yung mga, ano, yung mga lababo ni na originals. Okay, next slide. So, um, this is the same as yung, ano, yung kanina na, na nakita natin, yung ransom bars. Next slide. So we had to do we had to do this ano this this assessment na nakikita ninyo. So we had to go through the entire building and titingnan namin uh, floor by floor, room by room, element by element kung ano yung mga problems na nag exist and from there we had to create a plan no, on how to restore the entire building. Next slide. But of course the work uh, the work can't be done um, if you're alone, di ba? So, kung kunyari ako, arkitekto lang ako, hindi ko pwedeng gawin tong building na to. Kasi, kailangan magkoconsult ako sa structural engineer. Kailangan magkoconsult din ako sa interior designer para dun sa original na inter and interiors. Kailangan magkoconsult din ako sa materials na, ano, na um, materials engineer. Kasi, yung concrete noon ay ibang-iba yung formulation niya sa concrete today. So, yung, ano rin, uh, yung um, compressive strength is different. So, we had to put together a really multidisciplinary team. Uh, and on top of that, of course, yung mga researchers and the historians. Okay, next slide, please. Um, so, ito yung mga iba-iba pang problems. Um, a lot of them are caused by water. So, kahit sa mga bahay, siguro natin makita natin na kapag ano kapag uh, yung tubig makarating doon sa mga areas na hindi siya dapat naroroon, di ba? Nasisira yung mga areas na yon and the materials. Okay, next slide. So, we generated a plan. Ito yung condition survey. So, nung pinakita nga namin to, parang sabi nga ng administration na wow, ganaka ano, ganun na kagrabe yung state ng building. And then we were telling them na no, it's really just a graphic representation. Pero if you really go there, it's not it's not uh, as bad as uh, no, as the plan says no um uh, it's really just how you represent it it's a plan but all in all the building was still in very very good shape no uh considering it's been up for what 110 years already this year um uh, next slide so that's the ground floor and then meron siyang second floor in a condition survey next slide and then yung ceiling then si Nerve, I won't go through everything um, because of the time constraint. Uh, but we also did kasi yung mga walls and the other parts of the building, yung condition survey niya. Next slide. Yeah, next slide. So, ito yung mga iba. Pati yung facades niya, may condition survey. So, yeah. And then... Um, yung next slide, uh, <laughs> I, I totally do not understand this, pero this is just a parting slide. Uh, this is the last slide that I want to show all of you um, because we don't, have, uh, no, we don't have the luxury of time to be talking on and on. A um, uh, couple of years ago, may nakatrabaho kami na... Um, uh, engineers from the University College of London. So the team was headed by this amazing, amazing lady, si Dina Di Ayala, yung name niya. So makikita niyo siya on the upper right side, um, yung name niya, Di Ayala, Di Apostrophe Ayala. Uh, she is one of the um, best uh, engineers who work in structural retrofits para sa mga lumang structures, mga lumang buildings. And uh, I'm sure for the engineers, the language that you see in front of you is, uh, is, is actually something so familiar. But for us architects, we namin not understand that. We don't really understand that unless we have engineering background. We don't understand the drawings on the left side. Uh, we're very graphic, right? So um, I guess the reason why I'm showing this is that at the end of the day, I really want to impress to you that um, the work of conserving buildings, no? uh, whether from the Spanish period or from the American period or from any other period, um, entails a lot of contributions from many, many, many different, uh, many different trades. So the architects and engineers have to work closely together and find ways on how 
uh, we can preserve the buildings. No? So, hahanapin mo yung least na invasive na paraan para hindi mo masira, ah, para ma-protectahan mo yung, ano, yung, yung building in question. So, um, I think this is the last slide. Is there anything after this? No? Uh, so, that's it. Thanks, guys. Hello, can you hear me? Hi. So again, thank you so much, Architect Manalo, for that very insightful discussion. Indeed, that is very insightful. So you discuss on roles of architects in craftsmanship techniques in restoration of heritage buildings, and you shared with us a lot of the buildings that uh, na tackle or na naging project ninyo. And actually, kanina po sa talk ni Engineer Wanzon, Sinabi niya na everything is needed to be analyzed first, which you also emphasize in your talk a while ago, which is very important kasi naman po sa aming architecture students, sa ating mga architects, yun yung pinakaunang tinuturo to always analyze the lot or everything surrounding the lot and every structure or the design itself. So also in this, uh, uh, you said, kailangan magko-consult not only with the architects, but structural engineers, material engineers, and interior designers. Kasi yun talaga yung bubuo kung paano natin makakonserve and mapreserve ang mga heritage buildings natin. So I learned a lot from you. So thank you so much, Thanks Architect so Manalo, for that one. Okay. So again, for our dear viewers, I know you have questions for our second speaker. But don't worry because we will be entertaining those for you later. For the meantime, you can send your questions on the comment section below and we will take note of them for a later segment. So take note to keep your comments professional and relevant to the topic. So Architect Manalo, we will see you later on the open forum. Okay, see you. Yeah, thank you again, Architect. So also guys, Tweet us using the hashtag Juxtapost2021 so that we can read some of your reactions later. You can also tag at official on your IG stories. This webinar is in collaboration with PLM Association of Civil Engineering Students in partnership with Efondo Architectural Design Studio, Legacy Street, and Sentinote.ph. And brought to you by LR Punsalan and Associates. So thank you to our dear sponsors and project partners for making this event possible. So okay, so before we proceed with the next part of our program, we will be having again a five-minute break, I guess. So you guys can go and stretch a bit and grab some drinks and snacks and make sure to stay tuned until the end of our program because here we prepared something for you later. So guys, see you after the break. See you after the break, guys. What's up, Artistas, and welcome back to another episode of Arc Adventures. I'm Seth Angelo Tan, and for today's Valentine's special episode, we begin na mga mga tips kung paano masukit ang puso ng isang Arc student. Number one, tama ba si Adyate? Do your best sa class to maybe impress him or her. Isa sa mabisa paraan para mapansin ni Crush ay ang mapapansin na literal. Ipag mayabang ina Loki ang mga pigs sa ginawa at magkunwaring na hihiya pag pinure. Hashtag humble. Number three, the alpha material. 
Pahiramin ang jacket sa puyat at pagod ni Crush. Nakakatulong na ito kung saan saan. Kesa pa magitan nito, maaari mong pahiramin ang jacket si Crush kung sa tingin mo siya'y nilalamig. Sa parang ito, nakadamoves ka na agad kay Crush. Hashtag Opamoves. Offer help sa pagka-cram. Isa sa mga artist struggles ay nasabay-sabay na deadlines. Kapag nakita si Crush na nagka-cram, maaari kang magbigay ng tulong sa pamamagitan ng pag-render, pag-border, or pag-ing. Pero, sigurado himaingat ang iyong paggawa dahil tiwala ni Crush ang nakasalalay dito. Ano ba nangyari? Kasi deadline na namin mamaya, hindi pa tapos. Sa so, uabot pa yan, tuluhan na ito. Number 5, Coffee Slime Pagbibigay ng kape, likas sa RD students ang magpuyan dahil sa mga sangkatutak ng mga plates. Busy ka ba mamaya? Oo, busy ako. Gagawa pa nga ako plate mamaya ng kape, hindi na ako matasulog eh. Pwede mo yung book? Ah, sige, mag-ilap. O kape o para ang lakas na plates mamaya. Hello, hello, hello! Number 6, Chopper Road. O sige, sige, papunta na ako. Sabayan o ihatid pag-uwi. Natural na sa artist students o umuwi ng late o gabi na. Isang simple paraan para magpapansin. Kaya sabayan siya sa pag-uwi. Sa pamagitan nito, hindi ka lang may kasabay sa pag-uwi. Pero, may alone moment ka pa with Josh. Ay, matanda. 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 Ay,
So welcome back guys. Again, stay tuned until the end of our program because we have something prepared for you. So make sure you guys to gather all of your energy and knowledge about our topic because you might be one of our lucky winners who will receive special prizes awaiting at the end of our program. Yes, that's exciting to hear. So, but for now, we know you have been waiting to hear some insights and ask questions from our two speakers today. So in this part of the program, we are opening the floor for questions from our dear audiences right here. So, but first, let's all welcome again our speakers, Dr. Joseph Berlin P. Juan Zon and architect Michael F. Manalo. So good afternoon and welcome to the both of you. So before we begin, guys, we would like to thank again our two speakers for lending their time today to share their knowledge and experiences with us. So now let us entertain our viewers' questions. So take note that these set of questions were prepared beforehand. Some of them are prepared beforehand from the uh, registration, and some of them can be found on the comment section. So if you have any other questions, please comment down below so that we can entertain them and uh, architect and engineer can also answer them. So, all right, for our first question, so architect and engineer, the first question here that we got is, what would, uh, when do we say that a heritage site or structure needed a restoration or renovation? Again, when do we say that a heritage site or structure needed a restoration or renovation? So who would like to answer first? <laughs> no. <laughs> good, good, good question. Good question. Actually, uh, I can think question because dati, okay, natatandaan ko talaga na Dati, ang tawag sa conservation ay restoration. Nung, ano, nung dating, dating, dati. Everybody referred to it as restoration. And then, um, when, when I was sent to, ano, to school to study, uh, sa na correction, correction po, hindi po siya restoration. Conservation po siya. Ano. So, conservation kasi, uh, small background, conservation is the umbrella term for all of these other operations. So, kasama dyan yung restoration, kasama yung uh, like for example consolidation uh, oh yan replication kasama lahat yan um uh, but normally ang sasabihin nila ay the least that you touch the better yun yung golden rule diba so uh, it kasi kung ganun na preserve mo talaga yung yung authenticity na diba hindi mo masyadong ginagalaw um uh, what they call this. So, yung kanina nga, di ba, na sinasabi natin, kailangan ng masusing pag-aatal. Uh, di ba? So, kailangan talaga yung mga surveys kompleto kayo, yung mga studies kompleto kayo before you actually say na kailangan na siyang galawin. Di ba? Uh, I read a report dati uh, on Pawai Church uh, in Ilocos Norte. Um, isa yan sa mga World Heritage Churches natin. Uh, may nag-inspect na Japanese na engineer. Kasi ang problem ng fasad ng, ano, ng Pawai Church, parang naka, ano, nakaumbok na daw yung gitna niya. So they were saying, baka mahulog siya anytime. Eh, pumasok yung engineer na, ano, na Japanese. Tapos nag-install siya ng mga, ano, niya, na mga, na mga metro, na mga survey instruments. Um, tapos sabi na, okay, let's see each other in one year. Tingnan natin kung may movement. So after one year, sinabi na, there's little or no movement. So yung nakikita ninyo na deformation uh, may, have, uh, may have happened in the beginning when it was being constructed or in the middle or something like that. But the thing is, right now, it's okay. So even if it looks, even if it does not look perfect, wag mo nang galawin. Yun yung sinabi niya para lang maano, makorek yung uh, uh, dahil out of plumb siya. Sabi niya, you don't have to do that. You don't have to put it back and all of that because uh, iba yung nature eh, yung mga buildings dati. Iba yung elasticity, iba yung behavior. So sabi na you might even be doing more harm than good if you, ano, if you do things. So uh, ang answer ko lang siguro, um, 
when do we say that a heritage site or structure kapag yung uh, kapag in the studies lumalabas na talaga na there is uh, there's really a pressing problem already that needs to be solved no otherwise maintain nyo lang mm -mm. Alright, thank you po, architect. How about you, engineer? Ah, uh, in addition, no, no. so tama naman si architect, no? the, the list na gagawin mo dun sa structure of the better, eh. kasi para ka ma-maintain mo yung visiting ngayon, yung event, ang hirap sagutin yan kasi iba-ibang structures, hindi eh. pare-pares na ginawa. So, hindi mo, mag hindi mo masasabi na ito, kailangan na, ito, hindi pa. So, it's um, isa is about the visibility. Pagkita mo kayo, may visible tracks na siya. So, pero bago mo siya gawa ng paraan, investigahan mo muna. Analyze muna. Uh, ano ba yung nagiging cost ng mga cracks na yan? So baka mamaya, uh, cracks na pala sa plaster or something, so hindi naman pala sa delikado. Right? So, it still boils down to analyze first. Kung ano yung dapat gawin bago, bago ka gawa na. Kasi sabi nga natin, the least that you, that you can do is if, well, wala kang gagawin eh. Para ma-maintain ma mo yung authenticity ng no, no. Okay. Pero in, in our case, for example, Lumindol, and meron din natin sinasabi na, di ba, in-anticipate na the big one. So what we are doing now is investigating mga, uh, oh, mga old churches, sabi nga ni Arikita kanina, one of them is Pauay. So kanina, pinusad ko kanina yung, yung uh, Basilica of uh, Maculate Conception in Batangas. Ito pa yung in, in, investigate namin yun. So in-analyze namin, so, ginawa namin ang model. So na-analyze namin, nakita namin kung saan yung weak, uh, weak part niya, yung weak element niya. Then that's the time that you will do something on that. Nakita, na-identify na mo na kagad kung na, na if, if, if ever, kasi ginawa yun, uh, nung design siya, wala pang, ano, di siya ka-design ng earthquake, earthquake kung araw eh. So ngayon, with anticipating eh, the, the big ones, sabi na, which is uh, intensity something uh -huh. higher than, than six. So, imamodel naman na, imamodel namin ngayon yung structure na yun, that, that, that tatamaan pa siya ng gantong intensity, ano mangyayari sa kanya? How will he behave during analysis? So, nakita namin na, ah, pag, 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 uh, pag uh, yun tayo tayo simulation, right? So, pag tumama pala tuloy doon ito, ma-apektohan ma yung pasad, yung harapan. So, yun lang, doon ka kayo magpapokus. That's the time na kailangan mo siyang galawin. Okay, mm -hmm. for, kasi, for safety purposes. Kailangan mm -hmm. siya, safety. Hindi <laughs> pwedeng uh, uh, maganda lang siya ito, pero kailangan, sabi natin, kailangan safe, safe din yung tao. Kasi ginagamit pa natin yung simbahan. Eh. Correct. So, Engineer, may idagdag ako doon. Ha? May idagdag yeah. ako kasi sobrang important yung sinabi nyo kanina. Yung last na sinabi nyo, which is the safety of people. Di ba? Kasi parang hindi naman... Ang, ang goal mo naman is not just to preserve, eh, ba? It's, it's yes, to preserve for people, di ba? So, yes. like, for example, yung sinasabi ni, ano, ni, ni Engineer mm -hmm. kanina na uh, we have to make sure na yung mga tao na pumapasok, sumasamba, and all of that, they have to be safe, di ba? Hindi, hindi pwedeng maganda lang. It, it really has to be safe. Now, um, this, this leads me to a, ano, an example. Uh, may nakita kami dati sa, sa US. Um, Tuwang-tuwa kami kasi we did a tour of yung mga small mission churches in California. So hinanap namin sa mga Spanish mission churches. So inisa-isa namin. When we got to, ano, I, I, I'm not so sure kung Santa Barbara yon or something, sabi ko, uy, tingnan natin, basahin natin kung anong nasa plaque. Meron siyang plaque na nakakabit dun sa wall. Bronze na plaque. Ganda-ganda. So from, from very far away, nilapita namin yung plaque. Guess kung anong sinasabi ng plaque. Ang sabi na ng plaque ay, this is an unreinforced masonry building. Enter at your own risk. <laughs> so, meron sang warning because ang, ang, ang message niya sa iyo is, we're trying to keep this entire building as authentic as possible. Di ba? Kaya lang, if if we want it to be authentic, then we chose na hindi siya i-reinforce si ano, kung ano-ano. That, that was, that's their thinking. Diba? Ibang-iba yung ano nila. Because, well, siguro wala na nagsisimba or something. Oh, oh. <laughs> diba? E dito talaga, every hour on the hour, puno yan. <laughs> so we cannot compromise on, ano, on the stability of the structures as, ano nga, as engineer was saying kanina. So, you, you go to different parts of the world, iba-iba ang approaches. So, we cannot really say that one country is doing it correctly, another is doing it in a funny manner. No, 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 no. It, it depends on how you, ano, how, how you are as a people and as a culture. 
Okay. Then another no, another another <laughs> structure famous structure is the leaning tower of Pisa. Kita mo nakapagpilita. May pili yung Russia. Actually, may uneven settlement yun kaya nagkaganon. So, nagkaroon siya ng pili. Pero, kita mo, hindi na siya binalik sa dati. <laughs> Kasi doon siya nakilala. Eh. Kasi, so, yeah, pero, yeah. puro na rin siya para huwag na magtuloy-tuloy. Pati hindi siya mm. binalik sa dati. So, hindi mm. na siya binalik sa dati. Kasi, hindi na siya leading tower pisa pag binalik sa dati. Ayun <laughs> 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 Pisa. <laughs> okay, so... Okay. Mm. Yeah, I agree. Partner. We oh, okay. We both agree with what uh, yeah. both of our professionals said. Kasi nga, diba, it's crucial na hindi lang tayo puro aesthetic. We really have to make sure that the safety is the main priority. Priority here, kasi sino nga ba ang gagamit, diba? The people. And so, it should both work hand in hand, the safety and aesthetic standards at the same time. So yeah, I guess uh, the question was answered naman kasi both insightful sobra ang may mga nadagdag pa silang information ng ating both professionals right here. So, for the next question naman is, do you think using modern materials in conservation of old buildings lessen its historical value? For example, using steel trusses and galvanized iron style roof to restore Baclayon Church that was origina originally built with adobe brick tile roofing and also using portland cement to restore the walls that were made of coral stones and egg white so again do you think using modern materials in restoration of old buildings lessens its historical value so i guess the engineer mo nakasi si architect na yun na una. so uh, please go ahead yeah, yung, 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 uh, rehabilitation so rehab mo siya pero hindi mo siya ni restore from its original ano, Kasi it will uh, ma 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 sacrifice naman yung structural stability niya. Mm. So pag gumamit ka ng original material niya, it will fail. Hindi na siya, no? So that's why we have to use modern materials to reinforce it. Para yeah, yeah. it will go to safety. Ano, ano pa rin yung safety. Ano doon. So pero mayroon nagagawa ang mga uh, uh, architects ngayon, ha? yung mga cement, yung mga modern materials, nagagawa nilang luma eh. Mm. Na meron touch ano. So, parang yun know, parang yung tag na restoration you you restoring yeah. it back to the original ano uh is is uh, original na uh, na what uh, chura niya nung araw pero iba na yung materials na ginamit mo which is yeah. mustic yeah. mustic so ni rehab ni rehab so, mo siya and at the same time restore ni restore back mo siya doon sa original mm. so kaya siya ginamit na steel ano because steel is more ano uh, durable than than the wood so ano na yung reinforcement Okay, yeah. Mm. So, what Korean. about the thought of uh, architect? Natatawa ko kanina kasi parang iisip ko na mga 20 hours natin pag-uusapan. <laughs> no, really. <laughs> True, ang hirap niyang pag-usapan no, na ganito lang. Dami niyang branches. Oo, oh, yeah. it's, like, it's a very difficult question eh. Kasi mm. um, marami magsasabi na uh, it lessens the authenticity and the value and all of that. But at the same time, yun nga, di ba, yung sinasabi nga natin kanina, yung pinag-uusapan natin na, do I feel safe inside? Di ba? Do, will, will, will I feel safe inside? Uh, we, have to, we have to think first and foremost, ano ba yung value na itong simbahan na ito? Di ba? Kasi yung, yung pinakita, yung example ninyo, di ba, is, uh, ano ba yan, Baclayon Church sa Bohol? Yeah. Is that the yeah, one? Yeah. Uh, so, um, so you use Baclayon Church as an example. It's a church, diba? Mm -hmm. So um, uh, if if you really think about it, ang primary ano niya, ang primary significance niya and importance niya is its use as a place of worship. It's not the church building itself. Mm -hmm. It it has continued as a place of worship. Kahit anong isal pakmudzan na ano na building. Diba? they will still use it as a place of worship no so that's the primary ano. but of course we are saying na this building has come to our time no from 200 years ago so that is also very 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 important uh, the answer my answer to to this question the simplest way uh, na pwede ko sang masagot kasi ang haba talaga ng ano eh, ng sagot lang. the simplest way i can answer it is you have to do your detailed documentation and research first diba? so do it first uh, why kasi yung yung circumstance na uh, na sinasabi ninyo kanina is nasira siya nung lindol diba? 
nilindol siya, so gumuho. Yeah. Sira. Oo. So, anong first thing na gagawin natin? Diba? Uh, aside from fielding out a team that will do the surveys on ground, kung ano yung nangyari, and analyzing kung bakit siya gumuho, uh, you also have a team who is already researching sa mga uh, archives, sa mga offices ng mga records. Um, that would range from anything uh, from, for example, original plans, diba? uh, pati yung mga sulat lang. Diba? Kasi some... Ay, nawala. Oh. Okay, so we encountered uh, technical difficulty on... Yeah. Hello, architect. Can you hear us? I, yes. Yeah, I guess it's back now. Sorry, sorry. Okay, so Yon. go ahead. So, so the value of the research is very important, no? So you 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 have to look for everything about this building, no? Because that will tell you also makakorelate mo yan eh dun sa nakikita mo on site, diba? So when they say for example, for example, there are some buildings na naubusan ng pera midway into construction, diba? And then magkakaroon ulit sila ng pera after one year. Magre-resume yung construction. That's where you see the failure, eh? dun sa dugtong. So when you find the records for that, it will be easier for you to be able to analyze yung, ano, yung failure. Uh, but it will also tell you, ano ba yung original versus ano yung nakikita ko dito ngayon? Diba? So if it gives you solutions, for example, from that are period correct, and you can still do the period correct solutions because you see value in those solutions. Why not? Diba? But again, practicality. Diba? When practicality comes into play, then sasabihin mo, oh, baka kasi anayin yung, ano, eh, yung mga kahoy and all of that. Diba? Uh, but then that also shows you how much you, how much you maintain a building. Kasi sometimes, hindi mo na dapat pinapaabot dun sa point na inaanay siya, di ba? Kung minemaintain mo siya yes. regularly. So, sometimes it's really the lack of maintenance that, uh, that, that, that causes all of these problems. Because only if you maintain your buildings uh, in a very, uh, in a very um, what's this, uh, systematic way, di ba? Kung namimaintain mo siya systematically, meaning to say, meron akong checklist. Alam ko kung anong titingnan ko every day, every week, every month, di ba? Half a year, every year, uh, every two years, every five years, di ba? Magsa-summer, uh, summer na, kailangan ko nang i-check yung mga alulod ko kasi pag dumating na yung tag, ano, tag-ulan, di ba? Baka mas stock up yung tubig. If I did all of that, always and all the time, then half of the problem is finished. Diba? Yes. So I won't even have to, I, I just have to do small repairs and all of that. Yung mga ganun. So, mm. sorry, as I told you, mahabang-mahabang usapan. <laughs> <laughs> we agree. Super habang usapan yan. I think also, architect, this is an ongoing debate in some forums. Mm. Kung it should be uh, rebuilt or it should be modernized in some ways yeah. or it should be... Uh, restored yung historical value nga. Yeah. But oh, oh, since it, it's a priority oh, oh, to be safe, right? Yeah. I, I'll tell you, ah, na if you study conservation theory, hindi yan bagong problem eh. So it's a problem that's always been with us since like the 1700s, 1800s. Oh. So there are people like, for example, si John Ruskin, sasabihin niya na, hindi, treat a building as if it has a life. Diba? And if it has a life, it has a, a right to die. So, wag mo na siyang galawin kung gusto na nang mamatay. Para, ano ba? Diba? So, may mga ganong ano, may mga ganong kuro-kuro. And at the same time, nung lumabas nga yung concrete, diba? In the beginning of the 20th century, you actually have a charter na nag-sign lahat ng mga major players in conservation in Europe dati. It's called the Athens Charter. They signed ah. off. And they said in that charter that we will use concrete, di ba? Mm -hmm. And then 30 years later, because sabi nila, we, we, we shouldn't use concrete. Ano ba talaga? <laughs> di ba? So, you know, it's not a... Uh, problem naman yun. Concrete. Uh, because uh, cement, uh, cement produces uh, environmental... Uh, kaya mm. there's no time, you know, another material 
to to replace cement and concrete. So ngayon, because mm. <laughs> of the environmental naman. Correct. Uh, Kasi it changes over time din naman po talaga. Yeah. 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 Oo. And parang some some people would say that uh, as a material, it's too rigid. Diba? So, mm. kapag itambi, kapag isama mo yan sa, kunyari, sa isang system wherein yung kasama na, yung original parts as, are not as rigid, then kapag mag-earthquake, maglalaban sila or something mm. like that. Diba? So, those are uh, those are some of the things that uh, that uh, mga technicians are constantly looking in. Pero yun nga kaya eh, diba? Um, y- yun lang yung sinasabi natin na there's no one way to skin a cat, diba? So in this case, in this case talaga hanapin mo. <laughs> so it will really go down to a case-to-case basis depending mm. on the building or the structure itself yeah. then yeah mm, yeah so i yeah. see okay so that i think <laughs> yes materials usually not available materials so parang, uh, you should also create a sense of balance atmosphere where the historic past coexists in harmony with the use of uh, modern materials. But yes. still, it remains historical value, di ba? Pero, at sabi nga natin, we should prioritize safety. Correct. Hand hand. Alam nyo, for, for that one, okay, let me launch a question. Uh, uh, based on that, um, and bibigyan ko kayo ng case study. Ang case study na ibibigay ko sa inyo is San Sebastian Basilica sa Manila, sa Piaspo. Di ba? Uh, uh, San Sebastian, which is all steel. Now, yes. when it was built and built in the 1880s, and of this time, yes. it was the most modern thing. Diba? Mm-hmm. Sinabi nila, parang, gigibain namin ang buong simbahan namin kasi ayaw na namin pag-earthquake, gumuguho, pag may sunog, tupok yung simbahan. Ayaw namin nun. Gusto namin something that really lasts forever. Diba? Mm-hmm. Fast forward 140 years later, Diba? 130 years later, biglang, ay, nangangalaw pang na siya. Diba? At, tapos, ang dami ng mga ano, ang dami ng mga butas-butas and all of that. Mm-hmm. My question is, if it is significant because of the technology, will you also allow for technology to play a role in extending its life? Mm-hmm. Diba? Kasi technology ang ano, pinanggalingan niya. Yeah. So, that's an argument that I would. Oh, I, I don't know. But marami, ano, marami, ma, as I said, mahabang usapan. <laughs> <laughs> Indeed, a very long conversation for that uh, yeah. matter. Since it still depends on the material that it, that came from a while back, pa, as in a hundred yeah. years ago, na hindi na natin pinu produce ngayon. So it would be very difficult to really conserve a historical building in its original state. Uh, uh, original state na yeah. hindi malalasan yung value niya. Okay. Thank you so much, architect and engineer, for that, for answering that question. I think we can move on with another one because hindi tayo matatapos ko. Dito so, lang tayo sa question na ito. Yeah. So let's Pero move on with another pa. question. Yes, very much. So here's the next question. Uh, what are the common problems that engineers and architects face when conserving heritage sites or buildings? So I think we can start with architect Manalo. So on the side of architecture, <laughs> just the perspective of the two yeah. sides of the same coin, maybe. I think it is a very... Uh, Yes, go may, ahead, architect. Uh, I, I was reminded of something really, really funny. Because when the earthquake in Bohol in Cebu, I think that was 2013, uh, the, one of the first things that I did was to call a, a professor of mine in Mexico. Because yun yung ang, ang naging role niya, uh, way back in 98, when earthquake din dun, was to respond to to ano to to yung needs no for conservation <laughs> engineer oh, walang galang na po pero ang sinabi niya sa akin ang sinabi lang niya sa akin is first you take away the engineers 
<laughs> First, you take away the engine. They will only tell you to destroy everything. <laughs> so, it's it's not true. It's not true. Uh-uh. Uh, we know that for a fact, and that's what I've been. Uh, I was saying uh, during the lecture that everybody should cooperate, right? Uh, what are the common problems? Uh, for for me, marame, marame. Uh, yeah. too, too many to say in in one. <laughs> uh, oh, so sobrang dami pero. Parang, um, I think one of the things na it's not a problem. It's not a problem. Um, I would say it's a situation that is uh, that that is sort of not even unique, no. But it's something that uh, is uh, very typical in the Philippines. Like for example, when you when you think about the old church, yung ganon. Um, hindi tayo yung parang sa let's say sa Europe, sa Italy, sa Florence. Uh, yung dome ni Brunelleschi na ginawa niya for the Duomo in ano, friends. It took them 25 years to restore the dome. So, for 25 years, naka-scaffolding lang yung buong dome. Oo, parang, di ba, nanganak na yung ano, nanganak na yung asawa mo, lumaki na, binibig ka na, nag-asawa na yung anak nito, nanganak na yung misis niya. Nandun pa rin yung scaffolding. <laughs> di ba? But for here, kasi, it's not an option because our heritages are alive. Our churches are alive. People want to always uh, use their churches. Diba? So um, I, I'm not saying that it is a problem, but I'm just saying that it is a situation that, uh, that, is, um, uh, that does exist in the Philippines. Now, um, hindi ka pwede magtagal. Sa trabaho, diba? You have to, you have to make something kaagad because people want to go back and and, and use the use the use the church and use the structures. Yung ganon. So uh, that's that's just one of like one to learn. Of the many, <laughs> one of the many. <laughs> the many. <laughs> How about on the engineer side? Uh, of uh, the for me, I, I don't, I don't want to call, call it a problem. For me, I want mm -hmm. uh, it to be more of a challenge. Mm -hmm. okay. yeah. so, actually, you, you architects challenge us most of the time. So, you preserve the heritage. You will depend on the architects. Kaya yung kaya nung ano eh, di ba? Kung alin gusto niya para basa na na aesthetic, kung gusto yung i preserve yung ano niya yung itsura niya, then, then on our part, kailangan na ang gagawin naman namin is more on safety. So, structurally speaking, we'll do our best na ma-meet ma ma yung requirements nyo without uh, na nagiging-safe pa rin yung, ano, yung, yung structure. Yun naman yun yun talaga trabaho namin eh. Uh, it's more on the structural safety, stability, mm -hmm. stability ng nung, nung, ano, nung heritage uh, building or the heritage site. So, kung ano yung gusto nyo ipagawa sa amin, yun ang challenge sa amin. Challenge, not problem. Although, it's a problem. Kasi pag sa'yo yung problema, parang, ano naman, yun ang pagawa. Yung malalim. Yung malalim ang pagkakasugutan. That's not one of the problems. That's just a challenge. Lahat siya ang challenge sa talaga tayo niya. Pag sinabi nila, walang poses sa gitna ng building. Walang poses. Walang poses. That's how we respond to so that depends. We, we, I, I myself respect your your profession. We, we both respect each other's profession. So, correct. When it comes to aesthetic, kayo yung masusunod. Then we'll do our part on making it safe and stable. That's, that's, that's my idea. So, yung, 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 yung pag conserve the money is really more on your, more on your part. <laughs> then, then we'll make it stable para mas tumagal siya. So that's our part. That's our job. Parang yung, yung mga kaartehan sa... <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for answering that question. I think yun yung pinaka-inaabangan po ng mga viewers mm -hmm. natin. Kasi gusto talaga nilang malaman yung distinct na kung paano ba mag-work hand in hand. Hand in hand, Yung yeah. artist and yung engineer. Kasi it's a it's an ongoing debate din eh. Debate kung, pa lang. <laughs> diba? Kung no, architect actually, engineers of work. Oh, we have to. 
Yeah. Depende din. Yeah. Uh, when 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 uh, architect Leandro Luxin uh, design na uh, cultural center. Pag na-tap siya dito po, bakit gano'n? Ayaw na ayaw namin yung mga nakakantilider, yung mga... Kasi may hindi. Napaka-stress po doon sa bibs. Ano ka, stress na ginagawa mo pag nakakantilider. It's like you're parang Filipino. I-spend mo yung ano mo. Dinagyan mo ng load yung magkabi ng kamay mo. Ang bigat, diba? But it's still a challenge. Ginawa ko na namin. It's not famous. Pero ang famous to siya, ito, akita, hindi mo. Hindi, engineer kaya na, di ba, yung first slide ko, engineer po ang gumawa, yung pinakamaganda. Ah, military engineer. Maganda. Yes. Yes. During the Spanish time. Kaya nito siguro nag-resurface. Yeah. Yung ganong bibit. Kasi may history pala siya. Yung design talaga, kudra-kudrado lang. Symmetrical. Hindi namin kailangan pahirapan sa bilhin namin. Ayaw namin, ayaw namin ng mga nakakantiliver. Ayaw namin. Gusto namin yung poste, para pinas na. Gusto mo dali i-analyze. That is also a stereotype in engineers na laging ganito daw in a certain manner dahil mas madali. Alas, wala na yung possible yun. Dito ka sa Dubai, di ba? How do you have to text yourself in this? Yung twist pa nila. So, do you know how to challenge it? Class, design, structural design, no? Napakahirap sa akin. That is indeed very challenging in the engineer part. Yeah. So, I don't think it's a problem. I think engineer ang pinaka, ano, ang pinaka, ang pinaka challenging talaga for both of us is managing the client. Yeah. Ayan. 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 Yung na rin yung team of love. The client, the budget. And then everything goes after. Correct. So doon magbe-base din talaga. Yes. Kung ayaw mo yung post sa lahat ng sa gitna lang ng bahay, boss, kaya wala yung post na yan. Mahal yan. Kasi ang laki ng biga ang mga beams niya, di ba? Ang laki ng biga. Oo. Oo. <laughs> I, indeed, a very interesting question again. I think <laughs> every question was very, very <laughs> interesting time, with yeah. both our speakers. So I think, uh, partner, we can move on with the next question. Dahil yeah, okay. isa ito na naman sa mahaba-habang uh, discussion. Discussion for the both of our <laughs> Yeah, so for our next question, uh, what guidelines do you follow po to restore an old structure? So this is from Daniel Angeli Pastrano. Are this Okay, are there cases po ba na sobrang ruined na ang structure at mahirap na itong i-restore? How do you deal with such cases po? So, ayun, I think engineer muna. On the engineer side, paano po kaya? I think mayroong international guidelines, ano, from UNESCO, tama ba ako, architect? I think the UNESCO, the guidelines, kung paano na-identify yung mga heritage structures. So, sila yung nag-ano, di ba? Although, we also have our own, own ano, parang meron tayong, uh, what do you call it, committee ba or something? Meron tayong sarili nating ano, na nag-identify na, na, and meron tayong guidelines na sinusunod from, from, from there uh, sa kanila yeah. na nagagaling niya. Okay? So, kung sinasabi na ruined na, haba, kung galing ng example ko nila, yung, yung ruined sa Bacolod, talaga nasunog na buo yun. So, talaga hindi na nila binukulit yung bahay. Pero yung pasad, na-retain lang nila, I think, the, 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 yung, yung pasad niya. And, pero hindi na siya, hindi siya livable. Parang mm. for tourism, for tourism purposes talaga. For tourism na yeah. natin. Okay. Hindi na siya, hindi na siya ni-restore as in magagamit ulit. When it comes to bahay naman ni Rizal, since talagang lumang-luma, talagang hindi siya mag-restore, mm. hindi ba na talaga siya. Okay. Yeah, it's convenient here, actually. Yeah, oh, talaga. Uh, <laughs> yes, so. uh, you know, uh, Na-reconstruct siya, mm. pero ba't yes. itong na-reconstruct siya, uh, the same tura. The same tura. Ah, the same tura. And uh, I think ginagamitan lang din na for tourism. Yeah, and some yes, so. meetings and that seminar. So, Ganun na lang po ang kanyang function. Kasi yung lumang bahay talaga niya, hindi na-livable, so baka delikado na talaga masyado. Yes, opo. So, you have to reconstruct na lang. Especially na may mga tao kasi din doon sa paligid po eh. So talagang inano na, nireconstruct nila. But same, ano, as, ay, kung ano yung itsura niya before. So, yeah, thank you for that, Ingenie. Pero hindi na siya ito. 
Ya, berarti ha. apa sih kos lah? Oke. Halo, Pak. Oh, yeah, okay. <laughs> True. So, how about the thought of architect according to this question? Uh, what can you say? Uh, <laughs> complicated ulit, but <laughs> uh, sige, let's try to answer it again. Um, in the uh, guidelines a lot, parang sinabi ni engineer, there are so many international na guidelines, charter standards and whatnot. Um, it's it's uh, kami kasi yung ano uh, in, in in my office what we follow uh, is the bura charter so yung bura charter tells you to approach uh, to approach conservation um, in uh, in the most careful manner no? so um, but before you do anything you have to first make sure ano ba yung significance niya bakit siya important diba so um, yun yung ano yun yung kanina diba sinasabi ni engineer na uh, uh, we do have bodies in government that declare diba that tell you at the important na mga structures yeah. ang question mo kaagad bakit siya important diba like for example um uh, yung ah maganda yung anong building sa PLM na yung super modern yung parang may ano Matat, matat, Ayan, para, Lacton, yeah. GL po. Lacton. Yeah. Yeah, Lacton. Diba? Um, if you are going to say that it is important, why is it important? Is it aesthetically important? Is it important kasi uh, there was something iconic. na nangyari doon? Oo, iconic siya eh. Diba? It's, it's, it's super iconic, especially the uh, when it was built apat buong apat intramuros sure. almost flat tapos big mm. diba it broke so many ano it broke so many uh, aesthetic configurations for intramuros but also parang of course kung iimbestigahan mo siya i'm sure may mga famous din uh, personalities either for PLM or outside of PLM that uh, that um, either studied there or had their office there or something so, makikita mo na, nabubuo mo na kung ano yung importance niya. Diba? Is it important socially? Is it important technologically? Did it employ solutions that were, ano, that were different from that time? Diba? When you see that entire panorama, titingnan mo ulit siya. You take a second look. No? And then, sasabihin mo na na, ah, okay, so, um, important person. The important person was in this room at this time, diba? So I have to make sure that this room uh, still has the capability to tell that story, diba? Yun naman yung ending ng lahat eh. the, the, the capability of it to transmit the story. So if it does not anymore have that capability to transmit the story, then we failed uh, in, 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 yes. some, ano, in some of our analysis. Iko-connect po siya dun sa, ano, dun sa, dun sa ruins, di ba? Um, yung question, meron siyang ruins, eh, di ba? So, is, is the status of the building as a ruin important? Di ba? Is it an important ruin? Katulad yung sinabi ni Engineer kanina, yung the ruins. Kapag buuin ko ba yan, is it still the romantic? place where people all want to have their wedding receptions, yun pa rin ba siya? O baka mamaya yeah. hindi na siya ganun ka ano. Diba? Because there's some kind of romance in a ruin, in seeing a ruin. Diba? Uh, people, uh, it evokes so many ano, so, so many things. Feelings. Oo. Oh, oh, diba? So many feelings, so many emotions, so many things. Pag makita mo yung, ano, yung ruins, rather than nakita mo yung isang building na talagang kompleto. Mm windows in place, doors. So, parang yeah. sipin mo lang, maganda siya, but it's not as romantic as a ruin that's been left as a ruin for, for a long time. So, yeah. if it is part of the story diba, of the building that it was a ruin, then you have to make sure that you still can communicate that to the future generation. Mm-hmm. Diba, that it was a ruin. Yeah. Case in point, um, yung sa Berlin, the Reichstag, kung saan nagmimit yung parliament nila. No? Um, so that's their main government building. The Bundestag pala, sorry. The Bundestag also called the Reichstag before. Um, it became a ruin. No? Naging ruin siya. 
But then sinabi ng state, uh, okay, nag-move back to Berlin yung ano, yung yung capital from Bonn, diba? They moved it back to ano, to Berlin. Um, and the government has to have a home again. So they chose that build super ultra modern materials para makita ng tao kung ano yung bago dun sa luma. That's one of the things that they use, diba? Uh, but also, they let people see parts of the building as ruins and as places with graffiti. Yung ganon, iniwan nila lahat ng, ano, ng, ng uh, evidences of that history, of that long history. So if you're a visitor and you're going through the building, makita ka, oh, bakit merong graffiti from 1955? Yung ganon, di ba? And then bakit ito hindi siya malinis? Because ah, ito pala yung nasunog, this was left as is. Yung ganon. So you have to be able to communicate that story you know, to, to the future. And that story also has to be enriched. So yun, I don't know kung masagot po yun. <laughs> <laughs> so, I think every, uh, every so, question yeah. ng ating audience is very difficult to answer yeah. because it will depend so, on the structure yeah. itself. True. And it has a very long history. Oh, oh, but we, we really appreciate the questions, ah, because they're very well questions, and are thinking about these things. Actually, we have a lot more. I think we have three more oh, yeah. questions for you, and I hope you can still answer some of them. So I hope hindi siya masadong mahaba sa kuten, so that we can answer more. So I think we can move on with our next yeah. question. So this one is from Jomari Tan. So he asked, aside from analyzing heritage structures and software models, when would reliability theory be applicable in assessing failure modes in these structures? So I think it's an engineering question that is directed to engineer one zone. <laughs> It's a highly technical uh, question, to, no? and I think, uh, Joe Bonitan, are you the, are you my student in, ano? Para <laughs> 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 you're one of my students before, ano? You're gonna speak to some school, ano? Pero I think you are. You're one of you're, you're one of my best students before. So, wow. kaya challenge <laughs> 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 So, I said, ano? Ah, reliability theory. Be uh, applicable in, in huh? when would reliability theory be applicable in assessing, in assessing, uh, yes. in assessing uh, failure modes in this uh, structure? Uh, Joe Marie, uh, this is a highly specialized I don't know, question for a structural. <laughs> uh, I myself is not uh, an expert in reliability theory, I am a more in uh, construction management. Uh, no, no. Uh, and retrofitting, uh, no, pero uh, for me, kasi dapat talaga uh, ang building para pagpatuloy natin yung serviceability niya or yung livability niya, dapat reliable siya. Right? <coughs> so, yeah. yung, yung, yung structural reliability niya is always, always should, should always be there. Okay? I'm only more of uh, uh, familiar on the uh, software models that we use before in analyzing you know, in analyzing uh, not only old structures but uh, kahit yung mga bagong structures we really use uh, software models in modeling so to, to 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 simulate the the loads that we're going to that the structure should receive okay so <clears throat> i think the real the reliability theory should be uh, uh, i think addressed to to the a highly specialized uh, structural engineer okay so I don't want to answer this uh, directly because eh, <laughs> <laughs> okay. I see. So I think uh, si architect baka may gusto siya sabihin about this one. <laughs> Meron. Um, I'll, I'll, okay. I'll, I'll only echo yung experience namin of working with, uh, with the specialist from the engineering department at University College of London. Um, I said they, they came over uh, and they did some analysis on um, yung mga na, naging ruins na buildings sa Bohol and Cebu. 
but mm-hmm. also of the ones that are standing pa rin. Uh, and the the head kasi of uh, of the department si Dina de Ayala she she created this you know this this system it's called um it's called famive uh i'm i'm trying to find out what famive actually stands for but um it it, it just says here so synergy ko lang siya it uses a collapsed mechanism approach to derive capacity curves uh directly related to the failure modes of a building so um i i actually participated in one of the project survey lang ako hindi ako nagacom wala wala <laughs> hindi, hindi ako marunong noon so uh ang, ang basic questions niya um what is the wall made of uh but then when you say what is the wall made of um make core ba siya, which is rubble and then on both sides interior and exterior uh are there facing materials for example in bohol it's coral stone so how thick is the coral yes. stone and then tatanungin niya um are there windows and then any dimensions ng windows and then each bay does it have a ano, a uh, a pilaster or a um, a buttress or something like that what are the measurements so kapag iran niya yon dun sa kanyang ano dun sa kanyang modeling uh it generate na more or less kung saan yung mangyayari failures due to earthquake na yeah. earthquake lang yun yeah. Ah, so there's a software na directly on there, the earthquake na. There, there mm-hmm. is, there is, and um, uh, I'd also like to, uh, no, no, I'd also like to tell everybody here, because baka, uh, baka interested din yung engineering department ng PLM. Um, that was kasi a, <laughs> ano, that was a project uh, of the Department of Tourism. So the the reports and the know-how does exist here so uh if if you are interested you can request the department of tourism uh for a copy you know, of uh, of the reports but then who knows what eh, for you know, for for future use and reference yeah. but ayun hindi ko talaga alam kung ano siya so, <laughs> <laughs> just your thoughts <laughs> that's, that's i think engineer can take note on that one about mm-hmm. the yeah. software so that really our engineering that. students can ah. also study it in the future we are using a lot of uh, i have said kanina no? we have a lot of uh, software uh, for modeling you know, structures and uh, common or the stats just the tabs yes. the 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 SAP 2000, the Maeda, so maraming, mm. maraming, ano, maraming uh, software uh, that, that can model and ano, yung mga, not only the heritage structures, but uh, model, mati mga model structures, they use them. Mm. Mm. Right. M- meron pa yan, uh, important din yung to be able to predict kung ano yung magiging impact ng isang typhoon because of yes, the wind. Oo. So the uplift for example, for those big roofs, uh, it, it's very, very important to, uh, to, to be able to see kung ano yung uh, possible impacts. Uh-oh. So, yeah. Okay. Thank you so much, architect and engineer. Kahit na engineering question, in fairness, <laughs> architect, <laughs> di ba? Meron, Meron pa siyang input. Yeah. So, and the castle do sila. Yes. Maepa lang talaga. At least we learned a thing or two still <laughs> from the architect's perspective yeah. and your experiences as well, di ba? So, may natutunan bago ang ating mga audience. So, I think we can proceed with the, the next okay. question. So, last two na po. So, Question. Okay, last two now. So we have time constraints. So yeah, uh, yes. it's from Marilyn Christine. What are your thoughts po on the demolition of the Capitol <laughs> building in Escolta? And I guess hindi lang Capitol building sa Escolta, but I think it's uh, the Film Life Theater. It's demol na demolition. Din. So what are your thoughts regarding demolitioning? Demo- is it a word? Demolition. So, ganyan mga <laughs> so, demolition mga ganyan buildings. Uh, for I think it's in favor of commercialization, I guess. I mean, I'm not, I'm not really an. Pero yon uh, the question uh, is uh, familiar yeah. about this. Pero I mean, yung rec- yung recurring na debate niya is for com- commercialization at apod. Yeah. So what are your thoughts about that? Again, uh, it's 
uh, sa architect's point of view muna tayo. Oo. Um, sa akin, the, the, the question is uh, not only um, directed to these two buildings lang, di ba? Yung, yung capital. Yes. Yeah. Uh, In general po. Oh, it's it's the theater. No, it's a capital theater uh, in in Escolta, on Escolta, in the film light. Um, uh, I think our, especially our cities, are changing and developing. Um, uh, what I would suggest is for cities ready uh, um, uh, see their ways forward no kasi ang all of this boils down to planning no so it's a planning issue so if you treat it as a planning issue then you will see uh you will question no? you you will launch that question is my heritage an asset will i consider it an asset is it something that i can uh i can use to generate the uh funds from uh, yung sinasabi ni engineer nung talk na yung from tourism, for example, if I have my heritage in place, tourists are gonna come, how much, uh, how much revenue will I derive from that? No? Um, but there are so many other ways that, uh, no, that, that heritage uh, does contribute to, uh, no, to a society, uh, no, hindi, lang, hindi lang sa era. But of course, yun yung bottom line. Um, so for me, ang take ko lang dyan is that we have to strengthen our planning mechanisms diba? and planning in cities and in municipalities so that uh, right of na-identify na kaagad ano yung mga kailangan i-protect, uh, ano yung pinaka-important, no touch, ano yung next na ano of modern importance, pwedeng i-touch pero limited, ano yung pwedeng i-demolish. Diba? So, Okay. If if you have all of these in place and a system of revision, kasi pwede mong sabihin today, hindi siya relevant. Pero uh, mm. 10 years down the line, 20 years down the line, very relevant na siya. Diba? So you also have to review it again. So it's it's that entire planning system that we have to develop. Ano? Ayun. Yeah, so, thank you so much. Thank you so much, architect, for that. How about engineer? Uh, actually, I'm not, I'm not so familiar with ano, no? uh, capital visa or capital, or capital mm -hmm. chatter. Ang alam ko lang, may, may sila Escolta when I was young. Uh, parang nilalakad lang namin, wala binodong kasi tacos, pero hindi ko siya napapansin. <laughs> so, ano ba yung, ang tanong ko lang, ano ba yung impact ng capital building? Is it really, uh, hindi ba siya may tourist attraction ba siya or something? Or ano yeah. ba siya, ano ba ang original yeah. Engineer, it was a theater, uh, and then it was designed by a national artist for architecture, si Juan Nakpil. So, uh, and I, then, uh, oh, oh, I'm not so sure kung yung artworks labas was made by yung Italian na sculptor, si Francesco Monti, but it's possible. So, ma medyo, ano, medyo mabigat tong, tong building na to. Uh, and in terms of, uh, oh, yeah. in terms of it, Oh, oh, in terms of it being a theater, um, it, it was right there at the time na nagta-transition ang theater from stage to film okay. to movies. Uh, oh. So very, yes, very important yung, ano, yung, yung timing of the construction of yeah. this building. Mm. Actually, mas pabila pa ako sa Grand Opera House eh, sa Abinida. <laughs> During the, ano, so, para sa akin, mas may impact pa siya. Kaya hindi ko masyado matandaan yung Capital uh, Theater. Kasi hindi, nung, when I was young, hindi ko siya masyadong ganun yung real. Ang alam ko, parang sine yata siya or something. So, kung ang purpose ay talagang sine lang, I think, eh, and kung lumang building na siya na talagang hindi na siya mag, ma, 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 what do you call this, ma, yes. kapalitan na ibang, na ibang purpose or ibang use, <laughs> uh, I think, it, uh, for me, uh, okay lang sa akin i-demolish. Kaya lang, sinasabi ko ni Arte, is more on, sino ba yung gumawa? Di ba? Mm. Kasi kung kill yan, medyo may impact talaga yan. So, ang mm -hmm. ganda ka yan, is ano ba pwede natin gawin dun sa kabilang para ma-preserve pa rin yung ano niya, yung, yung building at the same time, uh, usable siya, livable siya, safe, safe siya, mamit mo pa rin yung ano. Pero hindi, I don't think it will still be functioning as a chapter kasi hindi tayo na-nodal sa ngayon eh. Diba, yes. tayo, no? 
<laughs> so I think I think virtual na lang. mo siya. It should not be yung original purpose niya. As a theater. Hindi mm-hmm. na lang. It will have another purpose na yeah, hindi na siya theater. Yeah, we have mm-hmm. uh, we have to think of other another purpose for that for that building. Kung talaga ang mm-hmm. medyo yung 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 architect na nagdesign. Right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Pero kung yung purpose right. talaga niya as a theater Uh, I think it will not uh, <laughs> make an impact sa ano natin, di ba? Kasi mas malalamang pa rin yung commercialization. No, yes. No, 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 yeah. I think what... Right? Oh, yeah. Is, yeah. Pero kung ako kung convert natin siya, convert natin siya yung functional na ano, I think it's better. Mm-hmm. Pero kung wala na talaga, then we have to demolish it. Something like that. Sobrang laking debate din ito kasi ang dami nagsasabi na parang you should uh, maintain yung history niya behind. Kasi yes, so, sabi nga sa comment section dito ay gawa daw ito ng first national, national artist, artist for architecture. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. parang yeah, ang hirap, sobrang bigat niya po, di ba? Mm-hmm. Yeah, so yun nga yung sinasabi niyo pong fact. So parang sa akin, then you have to convert it into a uh, useful, ano, kung talaga. Yeah. Kasi kung mm-hmm. habitable siya, or parang, such. I don't think the tourists, the tourists will go to Skolta just for that. Mm-hmm. Yes, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Hindi siya mm-hmm. tourist pa na uh, something. Mm-hmm. So, busy, busy street yan eh. Na uh, ano talaga siya. It's, it, after Skolta is known as the parang commerce, dyan, andyan yung mga businesses nung araw eh. Diyan yung mga laking mga business uh, establishments noong araw. Binondo, sa financial. Kasi karug, magkarugot mo yan eh. The Binondo na yun. So, andyan yung financial talaga. So, kaya andyan talaga yung mga unang buildings na mga, 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 mga commercial buildings and business, business establishments. Kaya siya, really, mm-hmm. Ma- makuwento ko lang, no? D- dati na, ito, na um, I, I was so surprised na uh, we, we visited the house of a family friend tapos nag-usap kami nung, ano, nung owner. So, sabi ko nga sa kanya, oh, tita, ang ganda ng house ninyo. And I heard that the uh, architect was national artist for architecture, Pablo Antonio. Tapos sabi niya, ay, oh, uh, Pablo, Pablo yeah. Antonio nga. Oo. Oh, oh. Sabi niya, Pablo Antonio nga ang architect, uh, he, he did so many houses and buildings for our family. Tapos sabi ko, wow, ano yung mga ginawa niya for you? Oo. Oh, oh. And then, sinabi niya, ah, uh, kasi sa amin yung mga theater dati along Avenida. At so, tinignan ko lang sa parang, wow, wow tita, uh, alin po yung sa inyo? And theaters that, ano, that they owned, uh, or two of the theaters, were already demolished and both were by Pablo Antonio. Uh, and sinabi nga niya, sabi niya, um, Nico, kasi ang problem is, it's becoming a burden for us, for the family. Diba? Number one, hindi na pumupunta ang mga tao dyan para manood ng sine. Diba? They go to, at that time, they went to the malls, they went to everywhere else. Ano? Uh, and um, sabi nga, number two, if the government is asking us to preserve these buildings because uh, they are the works of the National Artists for Architecture, um, how are they helping us financially? Sabi nga, uh, are they giving us... Same, yeah. oh, Yes, because parang sabi nga niya, it is also money. It costs us money mm-hmm. to be able to keep those buildings in place. Yeah, for maintenance. Uh, mm-hmm. Oh, So parang for, for her, sabi nga niya, actually, hindi naman yung magbibigay sila sa amin ng, ano, ng, ng tax holiday, di ba? Yung hindi na sila magbabayad ng amilyar or whatever. Okay lang naman na magbayad sila. But make sure naman that the area looks nice. Diba? That Avenida mm. and Escolta yeah. and all of these old districts will look really, really nice so that their investments will still grow. Mm. Diba? Yeah. And they can still help. Hindi masasayang. Diba? Ano yeah. eh? Oo, hindi siya masasayang. So all of their effort, okay lang siya. Eh, pero sabi nga niya, nakapunta ka na ba ng ano, Avenida? <laughs> <laughs> Ayun ako, tita, huwag mo na tanongin kasi di ba, laman ako ng Maynila talaga and I kind of know the area like the back of my hand. So, sabi ko nga, it's, uh, it's very sad. Di ba? So, sabi nga niya, um, the first rape of Avenida happened when they created the LRT. Di ba? Yes, so, takpan ng Avenida to be this, this beautiful, beautiful commercial area. Tapos biglang nagising lahat ng tao. Oo, nagising lahat ng tao ang dilim. It was all shadows. 
Wala na. Yeah. LRT. Oo. It was really the LRT. Mm. Oo. So, yeah. yun yung isang malaking, ano doon, uh, contributor to to yeah. the death of Avenida. So, anyway, yun yung, ano. So, again, I link it back to planning and all of that. So, good planning will give you better cities. Hi. <laughs> Thank you so much, architect and engineer. However, we don't have much time to Hi. entertain more uh, questions. questions. So I think that is all of the questions that our speakers can answer today. <laughs> so, partner? Okay, once again, thank you so much to our dear speakers for lending their time and effort today and for answering, uh, entertaining our questions. Sobrang haba pa dapat. Kasi hindi lang doon nagtatapos yun, di ba? And we don't have time. And of course, thank you as well to our very participative audience. At this point, we would like to present a certificate of appreciation to both our speakers for being with us today. Yeah, so our first one. Okay, so Certificate of Appreciation is hereby presented to Dr. Joseph Berlin P. Wanzon for imparting their knowledge and insights as a speaker of Juxtapose, Presidents of Lines, held this 25th day of April 2021 via YouTube live stream. Signed by architect Jared Aaron Cruz, our CALP advisor, Jillian Alain Sumulong, the event head, Trisha Danica L. Belizar, CALP SE president, and Janiel Duhali, PLM ACES president. Yeah, so again, thank you so much to our, to Dr. Joseph Berlin, Berlin what went on. Very much appreciated. Thank you so much. It's engineer. our pleasure, yeah. Yes. And of course, for our second speaker as well, we would like to present a certificate of appreciation for being here with us virtually today. So this certificate of appreciation is hereby presented to architect Michael F. Manalo for imparting their knowledge and insights as speaker of juxtaposed presidents of line held this 25th day of April 2021 via YouTube live stream, signed by architect Jared Aaron Cruz, the CAUP SC advisor, Jillian Elaine Sumulong, the event head, Trisha Danica L. Belizar, the CAUP SC president, and Janiel M. Duhali, the PLM ACES president. Once again, to our dear speakers, thank you so much for thank lending you. your time for us yeah. today. Yeah. Thank you Thanks. so much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah. So, yeah, so we are very grateful for our speakers today. They really shared a lot of knowledge, and I'm sure that our viewers are very satisfied with what they have grasped in today's webinar, right, partner? Right. That is exactly right, partner. So, I think it is now time to see some comments from our uh, audiences kung na-enjoy ba nila ano ba yung naging learnings nila for today yeah so you guys can comment kung ano ang thoughts niyo about this webinar and so ayan. yung mga audience natin ano kaya yung na pick up nila today of course, so marami. yes kasi kahit oh, tayo kahit tayo boss di ba Grabe, sobrang dami nating na pick up from the two speakers, architect and engineer. Punong puno ng learnings, so, only for a, a specific of, amount uh, of time. time. Sobrang yeah. exing oras para e discuss yung mga um, topics. But na they, topics. They, they did a really great job in explaining things na gustong malama ng ating mm -hmm. audience. So, audience. and dami ko nakakita dito na nagte thank you sila for the speakers. Yeah. So, Again, speak for our speakers. Thank you so much. We hope we can uh, get to have you again to speak mm -mm. or discuss some things with us in the near future. Yeah, sure. so, so we yeah, also sabi, have here. Sure, go ahead, partner. Yeah, sabi dito ni uh, isa ang ating viewer. Sabi niya gusto ko na lang maging engineer at architect at the same time. Why not? <laughs> Why not? Because it's so brang nakaka inspire talaga tong talk na to actually. Na parang yung both of our speakers are nagkakasundo sa kung yes. ano dapat role nila hand in hand kasi they really work hand in hand about reality in in real life sa industry yeah, yes so, yan, very dami. much diba sobrang issue ng architect versus uh, engineer, versus engineer na topic yeah. but here we saw uh we heard even na 
they work hand in hand. They respect each profession mm -hmm. and they respect the opinions or the of way they other, handle yeah. mm -hmm. the, the way they handle some projects, which is very, very nice para masimulan na natin, di ba, yung connection mm -hmm. with other professions as well. Hindi lang yung nakafocus tayo sa sarili nating profession, yeah. especially if we're going to work with them in the field itself. In the future, pag, yeah. Yes, pag lahat tayo is may license na to practice our Hopefully. professions. Diba? So, also, yeah. nakita ko dito from Ian Gabriel Padua, di na ako mag-shift. Yay! Yeah. <laughs> so, wag naman. Wag naman kayo mag-shift, guys. So, laban lang. Push lang Kaya tayo. Kaya natin. Naman yan. Oo. Wag lang tayong susuko. Kaya natin yeah. yan. And, of course, sa mga civil engineers, syempre, alam namin na sobrang hirap din naman ng... Um, mga subjects nyo sa course nyo. And huwag din kayong susuko kasi kailangan pa namin kayong makatrabaho uh -oh. in the future. ba diba? So, marami pa tayong trabaho together. So, ayun. Marami na like, thank you. Thank you daw for architect and engineer. Also, from Sabra Mark Joshua. I think si Mark Joshua yung uh, grade 12 student a while ago. Sabi niya, thank you po. It's an honor to take part in this webinar so yeah. ayun so for our yeah, uh, audiences <laughs> thank you so much pero yeah, wag so muna kayong aalis kasi meron pa tayong susunod mm. na program so here is yeah. a very very short program for all of you okay. for staying till the end of and this hour. webinar yes so yeah so at this point, we have something pre prepared just for you. So I know na kanina pa siguro sila nagtataka. Ano ba to? Something pre prepared for them. Ha? So ito na yun. So be ready and make sure guys to gather all your energy and knowledge about our topic because you might be one of our lucky winners who will receive special prizes waiting for you. So ano ba yun, partner? Pakidiscuss. Yes, na. ito na nga. Idiscuss ko na nga, partner. So but before that, huge thanks to our project partners and sponsors for today's event. So, Efondo Architectural Design Studio, Legacy Street, Sentinote.ph, and LR Punzalan and Associates. So, thank you so much, our dear sponsors, for making this event possible. So, we can now move on with the mechanics of our mini game. So here is the mechanics of our mini game. So for this mini game, we will be showing you guys puzzled pictures. So here you will guess what is in the picture. But of course, kung medyo mahirap, kung walang makakasagot, <laughs> we will give you some clues if needed, especially on the difficult round. Okay? So send your answers along with your name in the comment section below so i hope your hands are ready to type as fast as you can so again guys kapag sinend yung sagot nyo make sure na you have your name in it and then your answer okay answer. so yes. name ba name then their name, answer okay, answer yeah. so mali okay. Of course, so, name, mali. <laughs> yes, pag walang name, okay. hindi acceptable. So, name and then okay. an answer. Okay? okay, so of course, there will be prizes for each who will answer it correctly. So, here are our prizes. Can you flash it on the screen? So, yeah. our prizes are so we have a five vouchers, a 200 pesos worth of vouchers with a minimum spend of 600 pesos from sentinote.ph so again five winners of 200 pesos worth of vouchers and for the grand prize later on for the last puzzle i meron po tayong t-shirt one t-shirt from legacy street so make sure na sagutin nyo ng tama in this uh pagkakasunod name answer don't forget. So it is flash on your screen on how you should answer the puzzle. So, so for the swear. Yeah. Napaka so for the first five puzzles, puzzles. Diba? Okay. Yes, very swerty sila. Pag may iksi yung pangalan yeah. mo, easy Super to type. Advantage. Yes. Mm -hmm. So remember okay. guys, wrong spelling is wrong. Okay? Yeah. So let's first have a practice round. Let's see. Okay. 
Ayan. Ayan. Practice round. Diyos ko, napakahirap. <laughs> napakahirap sa mga. Napakahirap na ito. Kailangan nila mag-isip. Isipin nyo mabuti, guys. Kailangan nila every last brain cell sa anong, puzzle na to. Anong structure ba to, guys? So, again, name, answer. <laughs> Ayan, may nakikita na tayo na nagko-comment sa ating ano. So, ang um, Okay, go ahead. I think meron na si Seth Angela oh, Tan. Ayan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. ayan. Sabi niya mine. Sabi mine niya daw. mine. <laughs> But then he answered Seth Angela Tan PLM. PLM. Okay. Yes, so tama naman pero anong part ng PLM? <laughs> yeah. Is it the Go, go ahead, guys. Go. Pilal M. Pasan. Ayan na. Kinumpleto na niya. Oh, yeah. PLM Onion. <laughs> PLM Onion. So, that is right. Ganun lang po sasagutin mm-hmm. ang ating mini game. So, Seth, pasensya ka na. Practice round pa lamang Practice ito. Practice round, yeah. Yes. So, eto na. Okay, so. Let's start with the easy round. Okay. So, here is yeah. the first building or first structure again answer it name and then answer and answer okay yes. so guys go ahead and ayan ayan tingnan natin if may sumagot na comment down below hindi ko kailangan mong bigay ng clue parang ang tagal parang ang tagal nila magsagot so kailangan ano kompleto ha kompleto uh-huh. yung answer like ayan. kompleto okay So, As may in the whole na, name so, of the yeah. building, kailangan yung whole name. Ayan. Ayan. So, a little clue, guys. This building, um, for the Kaob students. Ayan, may nanalo na pala. So, from Ayan. Sophia Banyago. Sophia Banyago. From one magsaysay, magsaysay building. That Ayan. is Congratulations. correct. Congratulations. So, for the Kaob students, I remember... Nagkaroon tayo ng event in this building two years ago. So, yung mga third year students dyan and fifth year students of Kao, I know for sure familiar, na naalala yeah, nyo. Familiar, familiar yes. with this structure. So, so, next for one. The, I think for the next one. Here. Ano, ano ba yan? structure kaya ito? Guys, okay. tayo pa tayo comment think, section below. I meron na ba? I see a winner. Yeah, I yeah. Know. Yeah, meron na. From Ali Garcia. So, yeah. Garcia, Ali, and Jay. Manila Metropolitan Theater. Yes. So, ayan. Manila Nauna siya, guys. Yes, siya yung so, pinakauna. Congratulations. Okay. Congratulations, Ali. Okay. I think next one, please. Ito ayan. na. Moderate round. round. Moderate round, guys. Tignan natin. Ayan, ano kayang structure to? Again, answer it, name, and then answer, okay? Your answer. So, yeah. Parang hindi na natin kailangan magbigay ng clue mm, sa building na to kasi I think a lot very of people. Very Yes, yes. Mm. Parang very familiar mm-hmm. na yung karamihan nito. So, Ayan, sino kaya? Ayan, meron na tayo. Meron na. Meron nang nakasagot ng ating offer uh, moderate round. So, kindly flash it on the screen. Sino po sa ating Sino mga ba? tech? Ian Gabriel Padua. So, sabi niya, UST Actually, main building. Actually, balawa sila. It's, ano, 3, so, 3.27 p.m. Pareha sila ni Ace Marino, tsaka si Ian Gabriel Padua. Pareha Ayun silang nakasagot ng UST main building. Paano natin, paano mangyayari dyan? Kaya lang, partner, yung isa ang ano? answer niya lang. UST. Oh, okay. Okay. Ay, true. Dapat may main building. Yeah. Natin. Yeah. So, so, complete answers wrong, spelling wrong. So, congratulations. Congratulations. We'll give it to Ian Gabriel. Ian Gabriel. <laughs> <laughs> so, sabi niya dito, kay Ate Ace na lang daw. Like, say yun na yan. Sorry, nagkamali ako. Ayun, okay, so, so hala, mm-hmm. sige, kay Ate Ace na lang. Pero ayun nga po, nauna po si Ian Pado. So, uh-huh. thank you so much. So, here is, niya. yes, here is the next one. So, ano kaya yan? Ano kaya ang building? Ito? Ayun. Ay, ayun. I think 
meron ang nakasagot. Hindi na namin kailangan magbigay ng clue kasi feeling ko alam na alam niya na. Yes. So, sa mga tech po ayan. namin dyan, paki-flash na lang po kung sino ang winner. Ayan. Salam. Nauna si Seth, pero kulang cool siya. So, yeah. siya ang pangalan natin. It's, uh, It's Salahuddin. Kamid, Manila Central, Central Post, Post Office. Office. Ayun. Okay. Congratulations. Congratulations. Okay, good job, good job. So, eto na. Last round. Yeah. Last round. Get ready, guys. Get ready. Okay. okay, this is the first one. Madali lang to, ha? Mm-hmm. So, alam ko masasagot nyo agad to. So, go. Go, guys. Again, name and answer. So, kailangan complete answer, I think. Complete answer, okay? Mm-hmm. Complete answer. National Museum of what? <laughs> and dami, and dami nag-ano dito. Dami nagko-comment. Pero let's Maybe. see kung sino ang tama talaga. Sino yung nakakuha yes. ng complete name of the building itself. Yeah. Madami na akong nakikita partner, pero parang wala pa ata dito yung... Wala pa ata dito yung tapang sagot. I-make sure nga natin. Oo, oh, oh, mag-search tayo dito. Baka mamaya tayo pala yung mali. Hindi natin sila pinagbibigyan na. Na siya. What do you think? Hindi, partner. Tama. Tama, tama tayo. tayo. Tama yes, tayo. Yes, okay. yes. Oh, oh. Medyo kinabahan ako doon eh, no? Ako <laughs> doon. <laughs> Ayun, may nakakuha na guys Meron na ba? I think, oh, I think may nakakuha na. From June Tapang National Museum, Museum for Natural of... History. History Yeah, yes. take note guys Hindi siya fine art Sabi ni Google, hindi ko rin sure Sabi ni Google, hindi daw siya fine yeah. art Sabi niya, it's, it's National, National Museum, Museum for, for Natural History, History. Oh, So nandyan yung Tree of Life something, di ba? Yeah, yeah, yeah. As far as yeah. I know, yeah. So, congratulations, Jude Tapang. And now, here is the last one, guys, for the difficult round. Ito, yung prize na makukuha nyo dito is yung t-shirt, t-shirt. from the Legacy Street. So, ayun. Ito, um, hindi mo na ako magbibigay ng clue. Feeling ko mm-hmm. naman masasagod. Huwag mo na tayo magbigay partner ng clue. Sige. Let's, ano. Ayan, may nakasagot na ata. Meron God, na for, our, uh, for our ang for our ang bilis, di ba? So na. from yeah. Patricia May J Saba. So it is the San Agustin Church. Okay. That's great. So congratulations. Siya ang nanalo ng ating mahiwagong t-shirt. Yes. Yes. Guys, so, so pumapalakpak ngayon so kami na. Lang. <laughs> kami na lang po yung papalakpak okay. for this event. We congratulations, guys. Congratulations. Congratulations. So, that so, is all mm-hmm. for the puzzles. Yeah. However, it's a very mini game lang since mm-hmm. a reward. It's a reward for all of you for staying mm-hmm. until the and end. So, congratulations. Yeah. yeah, congratulations. Again, congratulations to our lucky winners. You can message our Facebook page, PLM Calc Student Council, to claim your prize. So, nice. thank you, everyone who participated, and also to our generous sponsors and project partners. Again, thank you so much to Fondo Architectural Design Studio, Legacy Street, Sentinote.ph, and LR Punzalan and Associates. Thank you for making this event possible. Yes, and that is it for our today's webinar. We hope that you, our dear viewers, enjoyed and learned a lot from today. So I'm Dorothy Jane Del Rosario, and once again, don't forget to follow at Calopesi Official and at PLM Aces on Twitter and Instagram. And of course, support our One View One Step Forward campaign by subscribing and watching our videos here on YouTube. So again, thank you guys, partner. Yes, of course, don't only subscribe to our channel, but support Project Sing Connect, an outreach program conducted through the efforts of PLM Aces. So their aim is to provide prepaid Wi-Fi and monthly load to financially challenged and deserving CE students. They are still open for sponsorship from businesses, government agencies, and individuals. So for possible sponsors, you can message them through their Facebook page, PLM Association of Civil Engineering Students, and also you can email them in plm.aces16 at gmail.com. 
Again, we hope you have picked up a thing or two from today's webinar. Thank you so much for attending today. Once again, I am Andrew Mercado, and this is Juxtapose, Presidents of Lions. Again, stay safe, guys, and thank you. Bye. Bye, -bye. See you on you. our next one.